comes a moment class. I just let whatever's happening with the character happen, and then, you know, let's go Good from there. evening, ladies and gents. We are live. Hopefully, Drax is getting himself sorted. We're having a few technological difficulties, so we're going to probably hang out and chat for a little bit before we actually start, just to make sure we've got everyone here and available and able to be heard. We'll just give Drax a few more minutes uh, to potentially sort out his uh, audio issues. But um, while waiting for Mr. Drax to sort that, he's going to probably drop in and out a little bit until he sorts it out. Um, Wednesday, Sunday night, we went to Exceptional World. Why do we have a, why do we have a little person on camera? Go to bed, child. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. He was just saying hello. Uh, and he's been told he's not allowed to do that several times. <laughs> he's a pain in the butt. Supposed to be You're in bed. Wrong. Go to bed. <laughs> he's ruining the evil facade that you God put up. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> evil facade? What evil facade? See, he can't even say it. <laughs> we, England, we all know he's a giant England hard. Shh. Don't ruin the reputation, Dan. Damn it. <laughs> Ruined. You've already done it yourself. Should you? You don't need my help. <laughs> That's it. You're all dead. You're going to die. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. He doesn't believe it's me. In the leaks Someone, leaks leaks everybody's going to die. Yeah, exit. Everyone get, yeah, that's it. You're all going to die. <laughs> so let's get high. You're all going to die down here. <laughs> I can trigger that if you want. Yeah, well, I've got that. Well, I think I've got that as a soundboard on my computer somewhere. Um, but yeah, so Sunday night went very, very well. We had another great session with the homebrew campaign on Sunday. Uh, the role play is just top notch every every week, and obviously the this particular session is just as good role play wise. Um, even though we're still still getting into the story a little bit, we've gotten a little bit into into it. We've explored. A little bit more of Barovia um, than uh, the previous time we tr uh, tried to do this campaign, so it's uh, at least that's a good thing. Um, yeah, anyone else got anything to say in relation to or anything D and D related? Cam, uh, you you you're taking a break from your other campaigns for a little bit, aren't you? Uh, with your Thursday night stuff and yeah, and I am. I'm. I'm doing D and D at the moment from Tuesday. Well, I was doing it from Tuesday through to Saturday, and I was trying to run SKT. And what I wanted for the module, I was finding I just wasn't having enough time to put into what I wanted this campaign to be. So I thought, all right, give it a bit of a halt, wait for some other campaigns to finish, and then I'll pick it back up, sort of thing. Cool. Um, Look forward to that because that was a lot of fun. Just because I'm. I'm a, I'm a perfection artist, and I can't just fly by the seat of my pants. I want it to be a particular way. And so, <laughs> Aren't yeah. we all? Uh, well, trash man. Yeah. Right. Yes, we can hear you. Yes, Drax. We can hear you. Does it sound better? Yes, it does. Yes. Nothing's changed. <laughs> oh, I don't know what... Yeah, that's typical. Typical Windows, Skype, rubbish. You've changed. Skype may have not changed. I just restarted well that that may have solved your issue but yeah before it was just really kind of shushy and before that it was just all static it was weird <laughs> sounded like that but higher pitched <laughs> <laughs> ah right so yes we 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 we're order we're sorted we got we've got everything under control so chat uh blue jay welcome to see you back again and everybody else that's joining us this evening um quick introduction if you are new to the channel before we start my name is evildoer um we are a dnd stream at the moment that is uh going to change as of next week we're not strictly going to be a dnd stream um as of next monday i will be reintroducing um my gaming to the channel five nights a week we will be going back to a full a full schedule of uh, staggered day and night streams. Uh, sad days will be no streaming, and uh, on the days we have D and D, there'll be no day streams. So Wednesday and Sunday, no day stream will be strictly just D and D, so I can focus on prep and all that for the D and D stuff. 
but uh, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday, we were doing double streams, uh, 10 in the morning till 2 in the afternoon, and then 8 till 12, uh, back on the gaming stuff. A lot of RPGs, uh, we, do, we were doing some uh, first-person shooters as well, mainly Call of Duty, for those of you that have Call of Duty and want to come and play some Plunder, uh, which is Plunder Quads, so I'll be looking for three extras to do some regular Plunders, probably on a Thursday or a Friday. Um, other than that, there'll be a bit of Warcraft in there. There'll be some Celesta, Crown of the Magister. I'm probably going to do a fresh run on Baldur's Gate 3. So if even uh, though it is buggy as shit, uh, I am looking for some individuals to explore the multiplayer on a fresh game of Baldur's Gate 3. If you are king, let me know in the Discord. Um, because that will be a bit of fun. And we might, we might do a little bit of RP with that as well, just to test out the waters. I know Cam and I have talked about doing uh, full-on RP with the Baldur's Gate co-op when it fully releases, so it'd be good to kind of sort of get a feel for it with Act 1 as well. Uh, now that I've completed Act 1 myself as a single player, um, and have worked through some of the more annoying features of the game that I can now probably work around a little bit, I think that'd be kind of cool to get uh, get in there and maybe do a bit of multiplayer and a little bit of RP with that as well. So we'll, uh, if you're interested, hit me up on the Discord, DM me, whatever, uh, let me know, and we can organise uh, a day or an evening where we can do some of that. So, without any further ado, we shall get into tonight's recap of the Curse of Strahd campaign. I believe this is episode 10 of our story which we have labeled uh, the old bone grinder as that is i believe we are our uh, players have decided to travel to and uh, when they awake the next day but uh ismark offers to show you to the blacksmith and other businesses around town um the blacksmith you meet and greet you gain some bits and pieces needed to or fibbles to, to create his you do and uh, actually silver you got to go pick up your silver powder Dante almost forgot about that what did you not I can't remember whether you actually I'm pretty sure you dropped it off mm. there and I yeah, think you said come back tomorrow it. so yes yeah, so you did you need to uh, revisit the blacksmith to acquire your silver powder. Uh, Fiddlesip acquired uh, the use of the forge, but only after he was closed. Adok uh, managed to acquire some sulfur, uh, albeit attached to uh, some uh, rock agate, which he's going to have to at some point remove from the rock before he's able to craft his black powder. But the use of a friend's spell, aiding him in the price of said uh, object um, which may or may not come back to bite him at some point next was the butcher and the general goods uh, the butcher a very surly gentleman but managed to uh, serve service your requests with uh, dried meats for rations uh, some salt peter again for making black powder and some fresh blood for a certain ginger in the group which was um, may have been unusual to some of the other play, uh, characters standing in the butcher at that point um, I don't believe there was anyone left in the butcher at the point though I'm not sure but you should remember where you were when that happened um, later on that day getting back to the inn Zedriel had a brief conversation with a bunch of ravens yet again that seemed to be forever perched on the inn roof uh, around the town square uh, Kanos using a handful of silver to determine how serious the town guard are about their duties and how they reacted to certain situations giving Kanos a little bit of insight into how things are in the township of Valaki Later that afternoon, Irina and Ismark headed to the church, which Adok accompanied them. A conversation ensued, and Adok uh, and Ismark shared uh, a little bit more of a personal conversation. Reaching the church, Fasili, 
the nobleman that showed you, uh, gained you access to the Valaki in the first place and showed you around your first time here, first day here, uh, was seated there reading a book and back and forth with Adok and Ismark and offered this book to Adok, which uh, turned out to be uh, a vampire hunting guide by a, a gentleman by the name of Van Richten. After that, Adok then was regaled with Irina's accounts of her meeting with Strad and much how she became afflicted with whatever it is she is suffering from at this point. On his way back, getting to the inn, he noticed Karnos and Fibblestib heading out to the blacksmith so that Fibble could create his uh, masterpiece uh, contraption. Uh, you did make it to the blacksmith without too many hassles once there. You spent two or three hours creating a new part for your rifle, which you, which he has dubbed uh, Charlotte. Uh, there is a picture in the Discord and uh, the Skype, uh, which shows the rest of the players roughly what that is. And for the viewers, essentially it is a tripod of sorts, but not a tripod. It's just a stand with a cradle at the top, which he's able to rest the rifle on to steady his fire and uh, help him. Uh, steady his shot. Uh, Fibblestib, with that, uh, I have decided that a critical strike will now be on a 19 or a 20 for you with using the stand, as it will steady your aim. Um, the misfire score will remain, and you will still need to uh, use your strength check uh, to for the recall if you are standing. You all then head back to the Blue Water Inn, and this is roughly where we rejoin our story as you wake the next day, coming down, coming back to the main uh, part of the inn. In the inn today is obviously Erwin and Danica, the owners. They are usually hanging around in the morning. Today, there's a few more people here, however. Um, there's a couple of hunters, the same two hunters that were there the first night you uh, came to Vallaki. The ones that ridiculed Ismark, as it were, as it turns out. Um, sitting at the same table, roughly, that we were last time. A couple other hunters with them as well. Um, you didn't sleep, you didn't get that far, but that's pretty much where you guys were heading. Tracks. It's just it's easier to push the story along rather than roleplay sleeping. Um... <clears throat> Once uh, another three or four other people colorfully dressed there as well, just hanging around as usual. But the one thing you do notice as you come down is a very tall, colorfully dressed man. Yes, you can change your spells, uh, spellcasters. Uh, if you've had a long rest, you can alter your spells if you so wish. Um, there is a tall man, colorfully dressed. Uh, seems half elven which is unusual because the bulk of the population here seems to be human this is the first time you've really come across someone uh that's outside of that demographic um so it is un unusual to see a half elven or even someone of elf descent here in barovia he is standing near the bar and seems relatively happy and jovial he is uh, regaling a story of uh tal Darsenia, which is a cleric that a uh, cleric of Tyre, uh, saying how once he was transporting the hammer of Tyre back to its uh, home temple where they were attacked by the undead, and instinctively he called for the hammer, which came to him seemingly of, of its own volition, where he then defeated over a hundred undead single handedly, but later. In his life, he was blinded in the defense of the Death Gates in Flan, uh, but gained magical sight, which he now uh, used to defend his temple to his dying day. Uh, an amazing story. Yes, Tyre, as in T-Y-R, Bayron God. Tyre, Tyr, everyone pronounce it, I'm pronouncing it Tyre. But uh, it seems like a very fanciful, fanciful story, but... It, he seems to believe it, and the other people in the bar seemed rel not too interested, but 
they you get a few once he tells the story and gives a bow a little few claps and and such around the bar and and he then sort of turns and starts talking back to uh to Irwin who's sitting at the bar they have a bit of a conversation and he then takes a seat at the bar and has uh looks like a cup of of maybe something steaming you can see a bit of steam coming from this cup maybe coffee or something of that that description so this is this is the scene you are greeted with as you re-enter the main portion of the blue water inn straight away Carlos he would have heard the tail end of the story getting getting his morning feed or whatever right yep everyone everyone would have entered in probably ordered uh, a meal or something for breakfast uh, coffee or whatever you wanted to get and you would have definitely heard the bulk of that story as you entered okay so Carlos thinks that is a great story and he goes and pulls up a seat next to this next to this character just for just a minor check you know and he, you pull up a seat next to him and he, he glances over at you and he gives you a gives you a nod and and sips from his drink and you can see it's probably it's probably coffee it's a hot drink of some description now uh, Carlos just says excuse me I couldn't help but overhear your wonderful story uh, there this this hammer of a, a tire you say well, well yes the, the hammer of tires it's a great story uh Tal was a, was a great man, a great, a great cleric. You've you've heard of Tal and and, and the Hammer of Tyre. And ta this Tal, uh, Tal is a male or a female? Yes, he, he was a great man, great man. Tal Danasia. Uh, he he uh, up until his dying day, he was as I say, he was blinded and was still able to defend his temple with uh, some form of magical sight. Always and able to sense the undead and. Uh, Amazing, amazing story. And this happened here in Barovia? Oh no, no, no! Of course, this was back in in Faerun, Of course, I'm I'm from Faerun. I've been oh. here in Barovia for oh maybe a month or so. Uh, so how long I'm have you been here in Barovia? Uh just just a few days, really. Me and my companions, and he sort of sort of reaches his arm around to show everyone behind him. He sort of he glances over his the shoulder wave. and sort of ah oh, yes, yes. You are definitely uh, strangers here, of course. We don't see many others uh, here. Uh, I'm trying to uh, get these wonderful people to visit uh, my circus. I have, I'm, uh, I'm a circus performer, bard extraordinaire. Uh, Rectavio is my name. Do not remember. Do not forget it, of course. If you see a, a colourful wagon around the parts, uh, we are obviously getting ready to set up, and it's only a small circus, but. It is awesome. You should definitely Rick, keep an eye out for us. Rectavio, you, your name is Rectavio. Rectavio, yes, Rectavio. Excellent. As uh, as the as the Velakians probably Rectavio. Uh, yeah, it has a nice ring to it. You think? Yes, Rectavio has a, a beautiful ring. Uh, it's, once again, about this hammer, is it, is this findable here? In in the lands. Oh no no no! Are. It's a it's a myth, a legend. Uh, the hammer of Tyre is probably hidden away in some temple somewhere in Faerun. I would imagine. Would not find uh, such a thing here. I mean, you might have uh, artifacts here. I, I mean, I've, I'm not really an adventurer. I mean, more of a entertainer. Hold on a damn minute! I've just had a great idea. I'll be right back. Don't move. And Carlos gets up and goes <laughs> straight over to the rest of the crew. Uh, Beelining for. F I'm thinking he was saying Fibblestick. Yeah, I think so too. Beelining for Fibblestick. Okay. Damn, cut out. <laughs> um, yeah, beelining for Fibblestick, but keeping the crew in, in view. And he sort of gets up and says, uh, I think this person over here is a type of storyteller that will regale great tales. Do you think we should get him to follow us and write our story, Mr. Stibb? Everyone. Uh, why? Why? Because we can be thing of legend when we defeat Strahd and, and free this barren land, this dark, 
place that we seem to be in. Now that is story of legend. And this guy, he seems to tell tales quite greatly. That Did you not hear the tale of the hammer of Tyre and the cleric that that Tal that, that wielded it? It sounded like a wonderful story. And that would that not be... Imagine the, the tales of Fibblestub and his great Charlotte piercing mm. the, the barrier of the night. I think that, yeah. No, Zadriel, you don't look uh, pleased. Uh, my God is better than Tyre. He makes whole worlds with just his voice. He just sings out and makes entire worlds with his fingertips. He is wonderful. Excellent. Can your God spread our story? <sighs> Good point. <laughs> oh, I've got an idea. Yes. How about we go and see one of his shows? I mean, if he's a performer, we want to gauge maybe if he wants to be telling Because what if he's a bad storyteller? You make a valid point. I did enjoy, I did enjoy the story of the hammer and the cleric. But you could be right. Maybe the circusy thing could lead us to what's our what's our day plan here? Because we want to go to the grinder, the the, the bone grinder, right? Zadru, you're picking up something today as well. Oh yes, I have to get my silver. Also, do we have to pay him to follow us around all the time? No, I I will sort that out if he follows us around. That would be awesome, by the way. No, well, hang on a minute. I don't. I don't feel like he's, we should be paying anybody. I mean, because he's going to profit off of our stories. So we shouldn't pay him. He should just follow us for free. I think you've missed the point here. What? <laughs> like a sponsor? <laughs> uh, is he a sponsor? Yeah. Hmm. yeah. Sorry, Mirabel, you missed the point of which part? Whole <laughs> damn thing. What? Why would he want to follow us around? We're I not will... doing anything at the moment. Or you just want some, like, guts and glory there? Absolutely. If something happens, there will be someone there to record it. It's not like we have like a magic glass that just records happens, everything we do. We might die. How That's are we also... going to record that? Give Skate this the loot. He can record our story and sing it. Uh, at this point, uh, Emily, you don't have your hand up. Just jump in, dude. Uh, Emily says, speaking of pain, did anyone actually pay the butcher the other day? Because I don't know if anyone did. Yes, yes, they did. I believe Adol did that. Okay, yeah. sweet. Yeah. You're I welcome. Sort of my thing, and then everyone said, sweet, we're leaving, and that does it. <laughs> You're not meant no. to remember to go back to people if we forget to pay them. Remember how like, I put 10 gold on the bench, and then he took it, because uh, I paid for it. It's You're welcome, by the way. Sorry, like normal, I wasn't paying attention, but I'm just such an honest person. I just, I just have to do these things. I thank you, Adok, for paying for my um, stuff. Cheers. I appreciate it. Oh, that's very kind of you to say that. You're welcome. And Carlos, is at this point you notice uh, Rictabio uh, lean over and uh, say something to Irwin. Takes a small package uh it looks like a, something wrapped up in a handkerchief an apple on top and turns and uh bows to Irwin and then starts heading for the door uh my friend rictavio is leaving does anyone mind if i follow him and just have a chat yeah also i agree we should get tickets to the circus or something how, how long will it, were you guys planning to before you go to the bone grinder because I want to go there but just wonder if I should follow and maybe get, I can get the tickets for us eh yeah well bone grinder's a day travel I think couple I'll check of, out a couple of hours I'll check out when the circus is and I'll be right back and oh. sorry Carol uh, how wait before you go how good is your negotiation skills that is a good point, my friend Adok. My negotiation goes better with a few of these. Maybe I should <laughs> go with him. Yeah, I feel like I'm going to go with you as well. Zedril, do you want to come? I, Anybody else? I think yes. he needs adult supervision. I yes. Go. I think you are all 100% correct. 
So we don't want to lose him now. Let's go. Come on. And Carlos sort of starts rushing out the door. <laughs> Emily says, I'm going to just do something on my own. Skater stands up, shakes his head, and what follows the rest of them out. So is Emily <laughs> staying at the inn? Yeah, Emily will um, return to her room. Okay. So Emily goes back upstairs. Uh, who is following Rictavio out the door? Just so we know who's everyone except for everyone except for Emily. <laughs> okay. So Emily excuses herself and heads back upstairs. The rest of you follow Rictavio as he heads for the door. Uh, he would probably make it to the door before you get to him, Carlos. Uh, so you are able to catch him as he reaches the, the door of the inn. All right. Uh, quick, one of you guys, I need our supervision. You say something. I I need a drink. <laughs> uh, Victavio, how much would it be to see your beautiful circus, do you think? Oh, uh, oh, hello. Greetings. Sorry. My name is Rictavio. I am the I... great Rictavio, the ringmaster, circus performer. Uh, I've met your friend, uh, and you are. I am Zatriel, uh, this people still adoc, Mirabel, and Skatos. Uh, greetings, my lady and gentlemen. Uh, uh, well, uh, the circus, um, let's see, uh, we're not ready for the circus just yet. Uh, let's see, well, I'll be here preparing. Uh, it would be uh, probably a week or so before we are ready to set up. But, uh, for you, special, special discount. Uh, oh. Let's say, oh, a gold piece each. Oh, very and nice. uh, you just, you come, you come to circus when you hear it. We will have flyers up, of course, and you'll be able to come and see us. Uh, we're hoping to maybe sit up here in Velaki. Uh, we'll see. Uh, I'm not sure. Have you ever followed people on your travels and? Uh, no, no, and, no, 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 no. I, I'm, no? I'm here for, for my own thing. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. If you excuse me, I must, I must be going. I have uh, a tr an appointment to attend to, but uh, I, w I am staying here at the inn. I, am, I have the uh, private suite upstairs. Uh, I'm more than likely to see you again if you are staying here as well. Uh, right. But uh, maybe I'll see you for dinner this evening. But uh, I must be going. Uh, excuse me. And he turns and quickly goes out the door. Carlos, he has a full-time job already. He's not for sale. Yes, but he was quite smitten with you, Zadriel. And you know, I have a way. <laughs> hey, Doc, sorry. Guess. I don't know if it's just me, but did anyone kind of question how we got here in the first place? No one questioned how we got here. To the inn. Didn't we just walk through the door? No, like, I mean, to this. Because uh -huh. like, we all got invited by the notes, yeah? My God. He did walk through the door. She's not telling a lie. No, but like, I'm just saying, if he's a circus performer, like, wouldn't. What, what's she doing here? How'd he oh, get here? How did he get here? Yeah, yeah that's what I'm just saying. Traveling around Maybe he's one of those gypsies. Why is he staying at the inn? Doesn't he have his own wagon or something? Or people with them? Hmm. Adok makes a valid point, though. None of us get to this land by just walking through a door, right? Or down a road. We appear here through some other means. He said he's been here a month, did he say to you? I think. Something so. to that effect, yes. Hmm. Well, he is staying here. He has a room. Maybe he's here for the next festival. Oh, yeah. A uh, local this circus. This one. There are a bunch of clowns here, so it kind of makes sense. I mean, I, clowns? I be a, a bit superstitious, but like my senses are going off like alarm bells. What you say, we find out where his room is, we break into it, and we find out what he's all about. Uh, oh. Yeah. That, that might criminal? be against what I stand for, but I can stay downstairs. I don't think that is the wisest plan. It is also against what I stand for. Fibble said, what you reckon? <laughs> <laughs> I say we investigate. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. I know nothing that's going on with this. I have you no lot. idea what you are referring to. Yeah, you lot can stay down here. If anybody else wants to go for a wander upstairs, feel free. 
my brain is hurting. So have a drink. Go sit down. Children and women and families are locked up outside in stocks, and you don't want to do anything about it. But a circus guy has a room up here, and you're interested in stealing his crap. Who said anything about stealing? They're just going to have a little look around. Bashava, please help me. Yeah, but like we can fix the lock if we break it, so don't worry about it. Two of us, yeah, you know, feel similar. I, ain't gonna I suppose break. you'll need somebody to stand outside to look out. Oh, yeah. I can remember. I'm going to the blacksmith to get my silver. Okay. And I will be back to bail you all out later. Uh, <laughs> Scaphus, maybe me and you should accompany her. No, never travel alone. Is that not the rule? Uh, yes, if you want. I'll follow Sedricar. Mirabelle, are you standing watch for them? Or are you coming with I'll us? make sure that these two don't get themselves into trouble. Okay. That's a good idea. Maybe someone a little more sensible should be left behind. Fib, fib. But that's not nice. Eh? I'm just uh, going to go and stick him in the shins. Yeah. <laughs> fib, oh, Stib, look at me. Look, look up at me. <laughs> Mind yourself. Don't let what happened last time do happen again, huh? Remind me what happened last, last time. time. Uh, just don't do anything stupid. No, I got, no, I got adult for that. Yeah, what could possibly go wrong? Look at this. Oh, good. <laughs> I'll go over and do a bro fish, bro fist adult. Oh, well. I just look at the pair of them like. <laughs> yeah, we have them too, eyes. Eyes. See, eyes. You won't have them if you do something stupid. I never do anything stupid. Maybe a bit shady. But... Do you remember the cow? Hey, that that was an accident. <laughs> Can't prove a thing. Adriel goes. <laughs> I didn't ask. Sadriel's on her way downstairs. You guys are all at the right, sort of milling around the front door. So uh, Zedriel, Scathus, and Carnos are heading to the blacksmith. So Zedriel, you can pick up your um, sil silver powder. Uh, <laughs> Mirabelle, <laughs> Fibblestub, and Adok, you are going to attempt to find the private quarters of Rictavio, I assume. You have no idea where that is. Uh, you don't have an uh, a intimate knowledge of the Blue Water Inn. So, uh, what are you going to do to find these quarters? I think well, we I've should got... just look upstairs. Or, we could question someone and pretend to be servants or administers of his travelling circus. We could do that as well. We I mean, look at this. We look a bit funny. We do. But I think we've been here in the end for long enough for people to realise that we're probably not with them. That is a risk oh. I'm willing to take. Uh, he, I'm he's, just watching he's, out, so I'm good. He's got his own room. If I remember right, we've booked out four beds. We've booked out six of the beds. So, by all rights... You know, he you, be in the last. Yeah, the one thing you do know is that the exterior stairs that lead up to where your guys' rooms are, there is no other doors leading anywhere on that terrace. Above you, however, is another terrace which does have a few doors leading off it. So, uh, intelligence check by all three of you, please, to see if you can determine uh, just by simple deduction that that's possibly the best place to look. Nat 20. 25. <laughs> 25 from Dirty 20 from Adok and Mirabelle. I don't appear to have any intelligence. Um, <laughs> Just an intelligence oh. check. Have you forgotten how to roll an intelligence check? D20 plus your intelligence modifier. I'm trying to find the intelligence modifier. It's at the oh. top of your page. <laughs> Five. So you got a five. Thank you. 
So, no, so Mirabella like, oh, doesn't have any intelligence whatsoever because she couldn't even find it on her page. After over a year of playing d d she still can't find shit on her page. <laughs> uh, Mirabelle, Mirabelle, Mirabelle. With those two uh, higher roles, however, Adok and Fibblestab, you almost immediately, both of you, come to an epiphany and just look up from where you are currently standing towards the front door. You, you look up and you see the balcony that is above you and the stairwell at the opposite end of the bar which leads up to it there are a few doors off that uh, landing but knowing that the public rooms or the rooms that you guys have pretty much booked all the beds out in are on the exterior uh, exterior stairwell up to the second floor and there is no way to access anywhere else from that area the private quarters must be on that landing. And there is an internal staircase which leads to that room. And I will show you on the map. Don't ask where that staircase might be. Is that the one by the stables? No. So on the stream at the moment, uh, if you've got your own maps, you're available as well. In the interior of the inn, you've got the stairwell on the exterior, which leads up to the second floor, which is where your rooms are. The stairwell at the, on the interior, just on the opposite side of the long table, leads up to the second floor to this particular area here. So this landing here. There is three doors off this landing. So one of those doors will be the room you are looking for. It's just a matter of finding which one and not getting caught. All right. So we can either do this, I reckon, two ways. We can try and convince someone that we're working for him, just recently been hired because we're new to the area and he's been here for a little while. Or we could just go up and have a bit of a nosy, stick around, and see which doors we can jimmy open. What, what's everyone reckon? Who's Jimmy? No, you know, like Jimmy, like just with the, just unlock the door and open it. Pick it. Yes, in just another have sense. Have a little look around. Should we just go up and see if any of the doors are unlocked? Well, I mean, that wouldn't be his room. Yeah, look. I'm supposed to be just looking out for you and look at me coming up with these all these stupid ideas. I could set fire. Alright. Alright, Fibble, how do you want to go about this? Um so... Yeah, probably be a single. Hmm. I reckon we try that last room first. No right. and, work, Sounds... and work our way back. Sounds good. Yeah, let's do that. All right. Let's uh oh cover story, Mirabelle. If we do get yes. caught, if someone's asking us what we're doing. Just yes. explain that we are working for him. We've lost the key and we have to drop off something of importance, all right? You can do that, yeah? So we've lost the key, but we're looking for to drop off something for him. Exactly. They can do that, yeah. Yeah, I feel that works. Like so, solid plan. All right, let's go. Let's do this. So you head for the stairwell, the internal stairwell that leads up to the, sec the mm -hmm. second landing. Uh, you muted, by the way. Shit. Evil. Okay, <laughs> you go. Uh, you head towards the stairwell, and as you start nearing the stairwell, you hear from uh, back towards the bar. <clears throat> Where are you going? No, no public allowed upstairs. Oh yeah, that no, is that right. is private quarters. Absolutely, it is, my friend. That's exactly why we're heading up there because no, we you're actually. Not. Sorry, you are you are in public quarter. That is right. where me and my wife and my children sleep. 
hang on. But we work for Rictavio, and we've been told that we're supposed to drop off some things in his room. He said that was up here. I do not think so. Roll persuasion. Okay. Fucking hell. I got a five. <laughs> do I even need to roll here for for <laughs> for this? Yes, you do. Just in case. Yeah, okay. Um Irwin looks at you and just raises an eyebrow and and says, uh I am not that stupid. You will leave what? now or I shall call the town guard. All right, fair enough, but I will have you warned that Rictavio is quite a stern master, and if he finds out we're not we're not able to drop off his stuff, he's going Rictavio to be very Rictavio is a pussycat. He's been here for a month. He is a good friend. So I know who works for him. Right, yeah, and you but, do right, not. Um, Get out. Yeah. Yeah, all right, fair enough. Good day, sir. Take your friends with you. I don't... Come with me. Let's go and... Shall we give him some money? We could do that. Should we, should we just try and say, look, we just want to see where this great Octavio, whatever the fuck his name is, what, I, where, I, where he sleeps, because he's just famous. I, I really don't feel like money's going to budge this fella. I could do a bit of ooga booga booya sort of magic to twist his mind no, a little bit. Let me handle this. Oh, Fibblestead, <laughs> do you reckon this is a good idea? <laughs> Ex excuse me, Mr. Bartender. Can't be any worse than what you did. I asked you to get out. I know, but I'm having a real fangirl moment and I just need to see where he sleeps. Please. Get out. Pretty please. He turns, but ignores you at this point, turns to his son, uh, who's just come into the room and, and says, Go fetch the town guard. These people All are right, not time to who go. they think they are. <laughs> Quickly. <laughs> yeah, well, people, yeah, we, we, got, we got to go. We got to run. All right, let's go. <laughs> Do you leave? So yeah, I'm, yes. Look, I'm really sorry, but if you could tell him next time he's in, I'd like his autograph, please. And then I'm going to turn around and run out the door. <laughs> so we'll switch over to Zedriel Skaith. This is really good, guys. You want to discuss on your way to the blacksmith. We don't need to RP the blacksmith. You're just going to pick up. Uh, you've paid for uh, the work to be done to get the silver melted down and turned into uh, powder. Um, <coughs> did say it would take roughly uh, roughly a day. So uh, it should be ready by the time you get there. But is there anything you guys wish to discuss in your, in your travel there and back? Actually, right as we step out the door, Carlos would say to Zed. When he, uh, he's having a bit of a stutter. Get there. We'll get there in a moment. There he is. Hold on a minute. Every time we want to go somewhere, have you guys noticed how Amelia disappears back to her room or to a bath or something like that? Yes. Actually, has she ever actually participated in any of our fights? Now that I think about it. I don't know. I'm normally up the front, not looking backwards, but... We've left her on her own, and one of our rules with me, Mr. Adok and myself were talking about, and we sort of all agreed upon, was not to stay alone, travel together. Maybe, do you think maybe I should keep an eye on her? Um, are they going up to the bedrooms? Is she in one of them? She probably will hear them, don't you think? Maybe. Maybe I should stand guard outside her door, maybe. just in case. That's up to you. Well, either they or Scathis, maybe one of us. Someone should do it. You've got to pick up your stuff, Cedriel, so I feel like it should be one what? of us. She needs to be... If we leave her alone, something bad could happen. We will not know what caused it. You can go if you want, and I can talk to Scathis. He's pretty chatty with me. <laughs> Excellent. I appreciate that. I think it's wise to keep together. I shall head back in and go and stand guard outside her room. And mm. kind of heads in. No problem. So you head back to the inn and head upstairs. 
Yes, yeah, straight to her doorway. Yeah. No problem. So with that, Zadriel and Skathis are heading towards the blacksmith. Is there anything did you, you wish to discuss on your trip? Did you mean what you said about my god being a liar? No. Ah. Well, what do you think of my god then? Explain. <laughs> I remain silent. I remain silent. Demon got your tongue? Come on, you can tell me. <laughs> can uh, persuasion you versus insight. Ooh. Twelve. No. <sighs> Skathis, what was your insight? Uh, six. <laughs> so, with that, Zagel seems... She seems nice. She seems like she's genuinely interested, which is something that you... It's rare for you. Normally you're... greeted with ridicule and scorn with the fact that you are the color of your skin uh, your scaly hide your forked tongue and your tail generally even though that you are generally a kind and nice person uh, that ridicule is hurtful and which is probably one of the biggest reasons you choose not to interact with people but she seems on the level she seems like she's genuinely trying so it is up to you how much you decide to divulge, but you feel like you are able to speak to her a little more freely than you normally would. I have no faith, therefore I cannot comment on what your god is or isn't. But you are a monk, aren't you? Don't they have a lot of faith in this? They, they're, they're monks. I was in a monastery, yes, but... I was shunned. Oh, I was shunned. Well, I was made fun of when I was in Vandalin too. I know what that's like. We have something in common. Yes. Except you are from the bowels of hell. <laughs> yeah. Uh, with that, I'll go back in and just yeah, walk as a monk. <laughs> with that comment, uh, Skathis clams right back up again. But you look nice, all red. Red is a very good color. Very handsome. She seemed nice, Skathis, yeah. for a yeah. moment. So, with that, you go to the blacksmith, you retrieve your powdered silver. It's not a fine, fine powder like you're used to, but you you know it'll be serviceable. It's a little bit more coarse, but it'll definitely uh, do uh, what it is you require it to do. Uh, you then head back towards the inn. Uh, Karnos, you are waiting outside of Emilia's door. Oh, no, I am not. Where are you at this point? I, I am not. I am outside Emily's door, but I am not waiting. What are you doing, sir? I am peeking through the keyhole because I had no trust in her at all. Okay, so roll an investigation check at disadvantage because it is a, not the greatest of keyholes and you may or may not see. I'm not sure. I rolled a 19 and a 16, so 16 plus investigation is 19 total. 19 total. Uh, Emilia, um, what are you doing in your room? Emilia is sitting at the desk looking at um, Lisa's. Is that all she's doing? That's all she's doing. So from where you ask uh, uh, Panos, yeah, I would say... 
you would probably just be able to see Emilia through the keyhole. Uh, you probably see she would probably have her back to the door. I would imagine. It's like, um, it's not in the map. It's not really a desk per se in the room. If you say she's sitting on the side of the bed, so she, you'll see her. Um, okay. Side on. Yeah. So you'll see her side on, sitting on the bed with what looks like parchment and bits and pieces on her lap. Okay. Uh, she appears to be was... reading or writing. You're yeah, not entirely sure. Carnos would knock on the door, just seeing you sitting near then. Emily will say, come on in. Yeah. So I enter, and I just sort of, I don't get too close, I'm about a metre away and just say, uh, is everything all right with you, uh, Miss Illustrious? Uh, yes, I thought I had a bad dream the other night when I was asleep at the bathhouse, so I just sort of tuning out trying to remember myself so we the group have discussed not being separate of too many of the others not being on your own so it would be good if uh maybe next time you choose a partner to keep you company i apologize if we left you alone for too long i have been alone for a very long time i do not socialize that is a fair call, but we are, not, we are strangers in a strange land, so to speak. So possibly it would be nice just to keep some... I can stand watch at the door if you like, if you want to hide in your room a lot of the time. Uh, secondly, something we have talked about also is, are you not into defending our, our group, our party? Are you not into fighting much? I don't fight. I occasionally fight but i try to avoid it i've had bad moments in the past it's like oh. if think of it this way i am a healer and i'm covered in wounds wounds that i could easily heal and that is a reason for why i don't like to fight that may not make any sense to you, but it does to me. So, just so I can get my pages all in a row here, you came with us as a group of adventurers. You came with one intent, and that is to heal, I take it. I came for a different reason. And she sort of looks away from you and then sort of croaks and goes silent. I'm sorry, uh, Miss Illustrious, but just may I ask, what what is that reason? If you do not come to aid us, nor heal us, and Carlos begins sort of loosening his axe. Ooh, I sort of got approached by a hero and was overcome with something that was girly oh, you you're, talk you're talking about me yes right so you thought oh I, I, I totally get it oh, and he re releases his axe again I totally understand that makes complete sense oh, I can have that effect sometimes on the younger ladies I apologise if I forced you into And you stopped again. Stammers. I apologise if I forced you into... Something from... you did not want to do. Yeah, well, I had to follow a path, and you've laid one before me. So I followed the path. Okay, then. Uh... Carlos is sort of coming across a little bit nervous now after she said that he says, <laughs> okay, and he takes one of his bottles and it's good to know. And he grabs the other bottle. <laughs> I'll, show, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you what, uh, Miss Illustrious, I shall 
just head back out. Unless there's anything more you need from me, I shall head back out the door and I shall just guard your door as long as you wish to remain alone. Just believe me that I can look after myself. I am. I may be hurt and I may not like to fight, but I'm still alive for some reason. Yes. Uh, okay, just try maybe to gel more with the group like I do. You know, everyone gets on with me so well at this point. I mean, every once in a while we have our little hiccups, but but we, we you know, we... I'll be out the door. All right, thanks. And Carlos heads out, closes the door he behind him, just stands at the door. <laughs> no worries. And with that, we will switch back over to... You're muted, Evil. Crap. You're forgetting about that. Uh, with that, we'll switch back over to Fibblestub, Adok, and Emilia, uh, Mirabelle, sorry, as you guys leave the Blue Water Inn out into the street. Um, and with everything sort of going on, Scathus and Zadria will be waking their way back to the Blue Water Inn. So as you guys head towards, I was, I'm assuming. Well, I'm not sure. I'm not going to assume anything. You guys are now outside the Blue Water Inn. What are you going to do? Knowing that uh, Scathus, as far as you guys know, Scathus, Carnos, and Zadriel have gone to the blacksmith, and Emilia is upstairs. You are now out the front of the inn with the threat of the town guard looming over you. Uh, Irwin's son, you did see leave through the uh, through the back of the bar. You didn't, you didn't see him leave the building, but he went through the back of the bar. All right, all right. Fibble, um, as far as I'm concerned, they're after Mirabelle, so you and I are, f are fine, right? Yeah. No, we're good. We're good. Like, because she went back, we we went to leave, so no, like we could we could just push it onto her, and we'd be okay. I, I look at Adok, and I'm like, excuse me, I think I just saved your bacon in there. Well, no, look. Hear and I'm going here, to right. carry on running around the next, the corner of the next building. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to hide. Roll, uh, roll, uh, stealth. Are you guys chasing her or following her? Yes. So you're going to follow yeah. her? Okay. Are you yeah, going to do yeah. the same thing? You're going to hide as well? Uh, yeah, yeah. I'll probably go a little bit further than what she has, though. Yeah. yeah so your stealth roll, Mirabel. I rolled a 15. As far as you know, you're hidden. Uh, if you guys are wanting to hide as well, uh, I'll need stealth checks from you both. Same as Mirabelle. 15. 15. I got a 10. So we'll take an average because you're roughly all in, in the same sort of area in between a couple of buildings. It's like a small alley. Um, so as far as you know, you're reasonably well hidden. Um, after maybe... 10 or 15 minutes or so, maybe half an hour. You haven't seen a uh, town guard approaching the Blue Water Inn, but you do see Scathus and Zadriel returning from the blacksmith uh, with no carnals. I ran up to Zadriel and I'm like, you'll never guess what those stupid boys did. Oh no. What did they do? <laughs> How much is the bell? We fanboyed him. Oh, you're here? Okay. You, wait, you fanboyed him? Yeah. What is well. this fanboy? You had what? Maribel called it fanboying, but. I called it a fangirling. Apparently. <laughs> I, 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 I don't know. Did you try to woo the bartender? She did. <laughs> no, I didn't. I just told him that we're big fans of Octavia. Octavia? Like Octavius, whatever his name was, and. It made the bartender quite angry. Who? Octavius, that isn't that Octavia, that isn't that from the Run at One Hundred series? <laughs> the check from the One Hundred series. <laughs> uh, oh, that's great. Not gonna, I'm not gonna lie. I feel like Mirabelle, myself, and Fibble may be in trouble with the guards folk. Um, so, no, no, no I, I got a plan. I've been thinking about this. So, what we need to do is we just need to find Octavio, convince him. That uh, you know, he could can vouch for us, and that way we're fine by the guard, and everything's sorted. We just go find Octavia, right? I, Everyone, I'll go talk to the bartender about that. But you've got to find mm. that if you really want. You, you might get autograph. in. Oh. 
Uh, that's really what I was trying to get out of him, but he just wasn't believing me. So, what what, what are you doing? What is the decision? <sighs> Skates, what do you think? Talk to bartender? Talk to God. I agree, we talk to the bartender. We'll go. Whoa, whoa, wait, wait, before you go, uh, I'm just going to touch Zadria and cast Guidance on her. Okay. And we'll That's go, uh, D4? Just... Yeah. Uh, nice. Just for a bit of bit of good luck, all right? Just I, I'll wait out here, out front, and just I'll watch from a distance. So are you three going to remain outside, still still hiding, or in plain sight? Wait, Kel, am I going back in there yet? Hiding or no? I'm going back to our yeah. room. Oh, yes, Which, we can get to yes, our room through the can outside, to, can't we? Certainly can. I'm, I'm, I'm with you. So you go back to upstairs room. to the to your guys' beds, yes, or to the rooms that you guys have hired. So that's cool. So uh, as you go, as you defer the stairs, you do find Carnos in the hallway, uh, standing outside Emilia's door. Hi, Carnos. What are you doing? I am just keeping an eye on, uh, you know, making sure no one is getting into any trouble. So I have partnered up with Amelia, Miss and Lustrous here, just because she wants to hang out in her room. Go on, we you really? you outside. What did uh, you say? No, we, we had a bit of a chat and she said she likes to be on her own, so I, I left her on her own. It, it's true, yeah. sort of, yeah. <laughs> it's true, sort of. <laughs> sort of. How can it sort of be true? Well, I did go in and, and chat with her, but but then I came out because I felt it was a little uncomfortable, right? What was uncomfortable? What did you do? I asked her why she came with us, so she's still not willing to help. And uh, she's, I mean, I suppose what she said was in confidence. I really shouldn't, you know, tell a lady secrets. What's the secret? Well, no, because if I told you, then it would no longer be a secret, right, Mr. Stibb? It's, the point of a secret is you tell someone in confidence. Then again, I don't know if it was really Did a secret. Did she say she just... it was in confidence? No, she didn't, but there was no They're one else secret, around. So what's your secret? You're very convincing, Mr. Stibb. Persuasion check, Mr. Fibblestib. I was hoping you'd say that. <laughs> uh, versus, we'll make it versus insight. I, mean, I could have said a DC, but I think versus insight seems to be a little bit more interesting. Dirty twenty. That's a pretty good roll. We'll just wait for Carnos to unfrozen, and uh, he will get his check. Ah, uh, thirteen. Thirteen. Here we go. So uh, twenty versus thirteen. So Fibble Sib is pretty convincing. Not not super convincing, but so it, we will say you you. Kind of want to tell him, but you're not sure how much you should tell him. Uh, okay, so she said she didn't like to fight. And I said, so why would you come with our group? And then, she, well, actually the best part was when she said that it's because a hero approached her to join and she had like a bit of a little girl moment. And I thought that's because I'm such a handsome guy and it's because of all my, you know, you oh, have I ever told you the time I met this group is a great group. Actually, I was over in the lands of uh, paradigm and I was helping uh, a group called the lions of the Right. And we were fighting goblins side by side. It was the greatest time ever. And, so there's this big dragonborn guy, his name's Het, and uh, oh, and then you've got this this other lady who she's like an elf, but she's also actually a dragon, and her name's Eldry and Fiela. And then you've got this, and I was, oh man, and there was this magic going on, and they were just carving goblins down. And then and then there was this other dude, uh, Sadiq, and oh, he, me. he was the what? man at destroying everything Come. around him. He was... Sorry, Mirabelle. We are, yeah. It's yes. Okay. Are you forgetting so... that I'm the goblin? <laughs> Just shh. He's and I look at Adok. <laughs> <laughs> and he's frozen. Okay. There he's back. Uh, 
I thank you for the shushing, but w why are we shushing me? Adolk. Are you are you serious? Adolk is a goblin. And I am a human. Tada! <laughs> Do you have to regale that tale as if it's so bloody awesome? I mean, meeting the Lions of Valond, I'm pretty sure. I, I wonder if I've heard of them. Probably not. But you know, that's great. I've never, I've but never seriously. Heard of this place, Paradigm, so I'm Shh. trying to call bullshit. Uh, There's that as well. Uh, roll insight Carlos. if you want to call bullshit. <laughs> Carlos, to put it simply, would you like it if I were to regale you of stories about eating children and humans and stabbing like women and all sorts of stuff of the human kind? Would you like that? Would you find that a good conversation or story to tell? Well, actually, it would depend on how the said story is told. If if these humans were attacking your village and you were protecting your children, an absolutely heroic tale would be... You would need a lute, maybe a drummer, someone to sing the line in a minor key and then go major. I feel it would be... Have you got a story like that? Can anyone cast silence? Anyone here <laughs> at all? Carlos, <sighs> uh, roll deception... It. Please, for the uh, pers uh, the insight checks that have been to call bullshit. <laughs> Okie dokie. That is... 11. 11. I mean, it's not really bullshit. It, well, let's say uh, the you believe that he was possibly in this place called Paradigm. But the fighting side by side, however, um, seems a little... He gets a little twitchy when he starts talking about the fighting side by side with these people. In defense of Adok and trying to shut Karanos up, I'm going to hit him with a shocking grasp. Oh, really? <laughs> yep. Wow. Okay, roll to hit. Oh, this is going to be funny. I think I might miss with a nine. I think you do. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so he doesn't need to know that I tried, but, you know, uh, I was just but trying. She does to... move towards you and attempts to shock you. Uh, you do get a reaction and a retaliation, if you would. As she goes to do it, Carlos reaches for his hip flask because, you know, he's, he's feeling a bit uh, mindly attacked. And as he reaches for it, doesn't even notice her. She she sort of. I feel like she missed as he reached for his hip flask, pulled it up to his mouth, and she sort of tased the area where he would have. <laughs> yep, I, I tend to agree. <laughs> Mirabelle, being as short as what she is, she probably would have moved up, and as he moved, she just miscalculated and shocked the near. Well, at that point, you'd you'd hear me muttering, "Damn it!" <laughs> this, stomping like, my hand, stomping my whole foot. Thing, the whole thing about lions, Bubkis. <laughs> Man. Answer question. What is the secret? <laughs> what secret? He kind of, he did kind of tell you that she had a fat girl moment. Whether you believe it or not, it's up to you. That part I don't believe either. I think that was a lot of shit too. I don't. But I... that being said, so you're saying she came along because she fangirled over you, and that was it. And she's not fighting because she fangirled over you. Uh, there was a bit more to the not fighting, but uh, I mean, I feel kind of guilty. Maybe you should ask her. Are you afraid? Does she uh, just want to be a healer? I don't. Because particularly... that's not that's not bad. If she wants to be a healer, that means I don't have to do it, and Badok <laughs> doesn't have to do it. That was. What? I mean, that I guess that was kind of the uh, kind of the feeling I get. But maybe I don't know. There's something deeper in her emotional state that may be a little how did you do deeper <laughs> did you... what did you do I, I didn't do we only gone you... for five minutes <laughs> I mean that's not a long no, time that's, I mean, look, I don't... Like five minutes it's over before it began okay. you're probably right it would yeah. be I think you're getting a misunderstanding here of what actually went on my dagger stayed in its hilt right I did not I insight check that. <laughs> sure, go for it. <laughs> Wink his dagger. <laughs> you can. <laughs> you can. A dagger, but okay. You guys can't hear it from downstairs, skaters. <laughs> Do 
do what too. Uh, he, he seemed, he's telling the truth. He's right. he, yeah, his, his dagger definitely stayed in its hilt. Hey, Emily, he's, he's you're in, in your doorway. I'm pretty sure you're pretty hearing this. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, with that, we're going to switch back downstairs as Scathus and Zadriel re-enter the Blue Water Inn uh, to talk to Irwin the barkeep. I'm going to put my arm through Scathus's and walk up with him and say, Hello, I, uh, we would like to formally apologize for our three children. I heard they were running around here. They were very excited to go to the circus and I had to run errands and I heard they got way out of hand and I have come to pay for any damages or, or so. apologize. You have a uh, goblin for children. Well, they are and, adopted, uh, you know. We felt sorry persuasion for check with disadvantage. Oh. <laughs> He's already pissed off. So. <laughs> I got to 23 and then a 16. So 16. 16 is not bad. 16 is not bad. Ooh. Oh, and I have a D4 still, right? You still, yes. Ooh, so 20, I guess. Okay, so 30, 20. He looks at you, he, he sort of says, make sure they behave. Of course. The next time, on God stops Aye. for you and your friend. Mm. You see that, darling? We need to see pay that, attention to them. See that staircase there that goes up oh. to private quarters oh. of limits. Oh, were they being bad? I am so sorry. Did they get to the stairway or? Uh, no. I okay. caught them in time. But you must understand that if you get caught doing things like that here, you banished from town. Oh. You will not be allowed back. There they is will, a lot of rules they will arrest, here. They will arrest you, take your weapons, banish you from town. Is there a set guideline thing that we are not allowed to do, or we are allowed to do, or...? Yes, don't be dick. Oh, Britain's well, we aren't. Up. We aren't. My children, however, they are just little, cute little tyrants, and I love them all. And we will go, and I will give you five gold for your trouble. Excuse and, uh, me. I know they're not children. Well, I am they no are my stupid children. man. You know, no matter how old they get, they are always your babies, so... Yeah. You get the sense that he knows he's calling you on your bullshit, but he's just, he's offering some friendly advice. <laughs> Zadriel doesn't care. <laughs> <laughs> he says, okay, uh, no money. Just tell them to behave. Well, no more I stupid. No more, be no more dick. Just, just talk. <laughs> Don't be dick, okay? No dick in the bar. Got it. I understand. <laughs> All right. Uh, good day. Good day. I go up. Keeping it in the sheath, Zedriel. <laughs> what? Keep it in the sheath. Keep it, keep it sheathed. <laughs> <laughs> so, with that, uh, Scathus and Zedriel leave via the front again and head up. To rejoin the rest of you are still in the hallway talking about uh Carnos and his keeping his dagger in his in, uh, in his pocket or whatever <laughs> uh so Zedriel and, and Scathers you probably uh, get upstairs at this tail end of this conversation uh you can you see them all sort of milling around the the door to where Emilia was uh, has her bedroom and uh you now, now rejoin the conversation so back over to you guys What do you mean you kept that dagger in your sheath? Well, I mean, yeah, dagger in my sheath, yeah. Uh, well, I didn't, I didn't try and hurt her is what I'm getting at. You guys, I think you think I'm real mean, but I'm really just trying to help. This land of crazy. Everything is crazy. You're crazy. What's going on here? Wait, we're meeting them upstairs now, right? Yes, so you're heading upstairs, so you would have heard that part of the conversation. What did you put on the bar? What is going on down? What did you do? 
You guys, I had to tell them you were my children. Canos, what do you, what do you, yeah, what's well, going on? No, 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 you guys carry on. I'm just guarding uh, Miss and Lustrous's door, but. No, 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 no we're what, not what off the hook. Hang on, what, hang on. What what did, did he put on the bar? Apparently, Carnos is using daggers in sheaths and stuff, and I don't. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's something about Amelia and his dagger didn't stay in the sheath or something. I'm I'm not quite sure what's going on. We were gone for five minutes. That's what I think. Apparently, that's a long time. Only five minutes. I don't. Ugh, I don't know if you guys understand what was going on here. I did nothing. To Miss Illustrious. She can vouch for that. I did nothing. All I did was open the door, have a conversation, come out, and now you're probing me for her secrets. Emilia! Roll, roll persuasion with advantage, Carlos. And dear yeah, Emilia, uh, you have a knock at your door once again. <laughs> come in. Probably. <laughs> uh, 17. 17. Uh, with that, yeah, you, uh, you guys, he he's getting frustrated now, as you, you can finally see it. He's his. I'm just fucking with him now. <laughs> <laughs> his voice is getting he's getting upset and that, but he's definitely telling the truth. You, you know he's telling the truth. Yeah, uh, but yeah, I'm you can carry on fucking with him if you wish. <laughs> <laughs> but Emily, uh, Zedriel is at your door. Can you come out, my dear? Emily, uh, stand up, holds up her letters, puts them down, and comes to the door. As open you open the, the door, you, everybody's out there. Whoa, here's everyone. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think we're ready to go because yeah. everyone is fighting out here. Uh, uh, Emily, I just got to ask this question. Was there or was there not a dagger? <laughs> uh, was dagger? It, was it not sheathed? What are you talking about, Fibusib? He's saying I... he pulled out his dagger. <laughs> oh, since it... I did not. Oh, I... Emily very clearly no, um, has obviously no clue what you're talking about. you got no idea what is going on. Yeah. Absolutely you've heard, you've heard muffled yourself. voices. You've heard muffled voices from in the room, but you got no idea of the conversation that has been had outside your door. Exactly. Uh, Emily is very confused right now. Oh, she's in shock. She's in shock. Look at it. Look at what you've done. She's like she's clearly in shock over what's happened. You're a well, terrible a person. And it was on cheese. Okay. All I know is I saved us barely, barely from getting banished out of the town for whatever what? reason. So we are going to get together and we are going to go to wherever we're going. Where are we going? Oh my, what time is it? I'm gonna um, look at um, my shield. Her shield. <laughs> it, yeah, it's still, it's still, it, it's not high noon on the shield. It's still probably mid, mid morning, early morning, or mid morning ish. Um, and it's about a two, three hour walk. It's a, it's roughly two hours, two, two to two and a half hours from Velaki to the windmill. From your recollection, from tra you walked past it as you came to Velaki, so. You, it's about two hours, two to two and a half hours from the gates that you came in to the uh, road that leads up the hill to the windmill. And it's at this point that you uh, turn and <laughs> as Mark is standing at the top of the landing, just he has a interesting look on his face. He's obviously been standing here for a little bit, uh, not long after uh, Zadriel has come up, probably not long after them. And he has a bit of a bemused look on his face, a bit of an raised eyebrow, and, and just sort of says, <clears throat> um, Are we ready to go? Are we ready to go? Yes, I'm ready to go. Yes. Let's go. And Carlos walks yeah, down the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as Mark turns, as, as you guys start heading towards him, as Mark turns and heads down the stairs as well. Um, really is to, um re-enter her room yeah re put on her gloves and tights and her boots and everything yeah except for the mask she's not going to put the mask on okay. and she's got just going to stick her robe over her shoulder okay and stick everything else into her bag no problem and um, re meet the group outside 
No problem. And a couple so left. you all eventually regroup uh, out the front of the Blue Water Inn. Um, above you, you hear a loud squawk as as you look up. Those same four ravens are still perched on top of the the Blue Water Inn's roof, and not in the same sort of position. They've changed changed and moved now. That looks much like the same ravens. I mean, ravens are raven, but they are very noisy and squawking. What was that? Mergatroid would probably look up and hiss. Oh, that's right, you I have your cat out, don't you? I haven't seen the yeah. kitty cat yet. <laughs> yes, I've got my cat out. She's got her when pussy out. When did you get a kitty cat? <laughs> have you had that the whole time? No, I just sat down. I thought I'd bring her along with us this time. I got her yesterday. I think I summoned her. Is, is she uh... friendly? Can I pet her? She is very friendly, and what you'd see is a little, like, tortoiseshell, very tiny cat. Like, when I say tiny, she's, in my hand, tiny. the hell's the purpose of that? <laughs> I haven't got the spells to, you know, power to make her any bigger. She's but you a... don't know that. Yeah, familiars can be the size of a normal cat. I don't know that. Oh, okay, fair enough. <laughs> but hey, play it how you want it. <laughs> this is really no place for pets or Adoc's lunch, Mirabel. I believe we have things to do. Yeah, actually, yes, Adoc, make a wisdom save. <laughs> Twelve. That looks very tasty. <laughs> yeah, I was about to walk up to Mirabel and say, look, um... Thank you for trying to appetize us all with um, this lovely offering, but it's a little bit small. Can you make it a bit bigger? It's like a snack at the moment. If it's going to feed all of us, we need it to be a full size one. Gonos, can I borrow one of your flasks for a minute, please? <laughs> uh, you must borrow two and have a sip out of each to make it even. All right. I hand you two. Water skin. Yeah. Drink this. Just take two and go. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Uh, it's um, what you is... taste too. Sorry. Don't go here. What you taste is a mixture of beer, wine, and me, just because I just top it up with whatever every time. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty. Think rocket fuel. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't taste very nice at all. This. this is not my day. Let's go. Uh, I'll take you, are you quite my... finished? Uh, we must get going if we want to get there and get back before nightfall. Okay. Do not want to be outside of this, the town walls bef uh, after dark. So we best get moving, yes? And I look at Adok and I kind of take a ration pack out of my bag and give it to him and because he's not snacks. No, but the ration packs are snacks. Ration packs are snacks, cats are not. Well, that's right. Like a full cat is a meal. Oh. Chili or a gano is good, but like that's small. That's why you need a full one. <laughs> at this point, Murgatroyd would probably kind of look at him, hiss, look at me, and just gonna crawl into my collar. <laughs> and so noted, the tiny cat, <laughs> and then disappears up the coat into a collar. <laughs> and with that, you turn and you head towards. The Sunrise Gate, or the, the Gate of the Sun uh, on the eastern side of Valaki. The gate you uh, entered as you entered into the uh, township. This takes you back through the town square where the stocks are still full. Um, same people still there. The, uh, again, uh, four town guard, two on, a, two on either side of the, the platform where the stocks have, uh, are located. And um, several, again, there's a few people milling around in the town as usual. I just realized my music is really, really quiet. And not actually doing a whole lot. Go to that one. Let's go to that one. So, with that... You make it to the gate, you talk to, uh, Ismark talks to the guard, they nod and unlock the gate and allow you to exit back out onto Old Slavich Road. 
the mist still hangs thick uh, in the air as it always does it's still overcast uh, a light rain is falling nothing too serious today just a, like that real misty rain has formed this day very dingy still very dingy and dark as it always is as it since you guys have arrived here it just seems so depressing all the time just the, the weather is just just terrible kind of constantly you head out past the uh, stakes that have the wolves heads attached uh, the smell is quite pungent as you pass by they've been there for a number of days now <laughs> Mirabel just showed, showed us the cat that is cool um, so yeah so you set out on your journey towards the old bone grinder and this is where we're going to stop for a short break so we will be right back ladies and gentlemen as um our intrepid travelers uh heading towards the old bone grinder along alt slavich road so be with us we'll be right back Greetings, everyone. I am back. Just waiting for the rest of these, rest of the guys to return. But uh, chat, 
Uh, awesome to have you guys here tonight. Just a quick uh, shout out before everyone returns. We get back into it. Bloofing around King Frost 69 and LARP Dungeon Master. Thank you for the follows. Appreciate it very, very much. What's up, Sylv? How you doing, buddy? Who else we got milling around in the chat there? Uh, all the usual suspects by the looks of it. That's good to hear, Sylv. Good, uh, good to hear you feeling better, my friend. But yes, these, these guys are just, uh, again, top notch with the humor. The innuendo is uh, pretty, <laughs> pretty bad. Bloofing around, what's up? Rockosaurus Rex. <laughs> Love it. No, I can't. I see you're talking, Evil, but you're muted. I know, because I'm talking to the chat. Well, I can talk to you guys, too. I didn't know we're live. Huh. Yeah, I went back. But yes, um, let's see. I can, actually. No, I can't. It is very blurry. It's too small. There you go. That's what she Turn said. No, I readjusted skaters for you. Oh, look, it's off to the side. That's cool. Oh, I didn't know you could do but, that. There you go. Did you re-Photoshop it? Or... Yeah, well, not exactly. I went back to Hero Forge and repositioned it. Ah, good idea. Make the screen ca uh, screen capture offset. That's pretty cool. It is not pretty cool. A, not a bad idea indeed. Yes. Uh, last week's episode was great. I mean, I'd say this this campaign has just been getting better and better every episode. Uh, I mean, it's taken these guys almost just over an hour to get out of town, which is the funny thing. <laughs> I, I didn't expect them to quite uh, to do quite so much stuff in town before try before eventually leaving town, <laughs> but it was funny nonetheless. Um, obviously, dice rolls have had a big role in uh, certain things not going the way that you expect them to go. Uh, people have an adox uh, intent on rams ramsacking <laughs> Octavio's room. Didn't quite go as, as planned. Exactly, Silver, exactly. 100%, man. If people are having fun, it doesn't matter what happens. Yeah, man, I I would be happy if these guys spent three hours role playing a scene in the inn, as long as the role play was fun. I mean, that's we're not we rushing this campaign. <laughs> I know uh, we're not rushing the campaign. That's that's the thing with this. Uh, we're not rushing the the homebrew one as well. But ultimately, we're just it's a no rush campaign at all. It's we do what we do when we do it. Um, if it results in combat, then it results in combat. If it doesn't, if it's a full-on RP, then it's full-on RP. I prefer that because the story gets told. And we learn more about uh, the players and the, the their characters the uh, and the way they portray their characters by just allowing the story to unfold as it unfolds. I'm just wondering if um, Gathis and Zadriol rocked upstairs with their arms still locked together. Uh, probably. I, w I mean, unless Skathis uh, uh, unhooked himself from Zadriel, they probably would have. <laughs> you know you don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> what? So it's up to you guys. So it's up to you, Skathis, whether, whether you did or didn't. Because it could have an impact on the ridicule because it may have changed direction. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it was flirting. <laughs> Not a dear a D and D mukbang. What the hell is a mukbang? I have no idea what that term means. Oh, it that's just an American a, term. It's an eating video where someone just yeah. makes a lot of noise whilst they're eating stuff in oh, the face right. in front of a camera. <laughs> no, not a D and D uh. mukbang. It's just just D and D at its at its core. Uh, theater of the mind. We for this campaign, we're not using the live battle map. I do. Normally, with the homebrew campaign, run a live battle map with miniatures and and that sort of thing. 
but uh, this campaign, we, I decided to go back to not. I mean, we're not going back editions, but just go back to the the roots of D and D, which is role play, theater of the mind, uh, combat, all that sort of stuff. Which is, I it's what I enjoy with D and D. So I'm going to say I'm 25 years old, and I've never had, and I've never had one. Now it's uh, me and four women, and suddenly we're having fucking competition, royal balls and weddings. It's really interesting. It doesn't have to be related. Yeah, exactly. Not in my 25 years. Sorry. Well, I'm, I'm 25, aren't we all? Isn't that how, it's go how it goes? We're all 25 with GST? Yeah, I've been playing tabletop RPGs for probably 25 to 30 years. So give or take. Uh, Baz has been my DM for the bulk of that <laughs> as well. So uh, we did a, we actually we did a lot of Warhammer 40k uh, tabletop through for a while there. We did for three or four years. I think we played a lot of 40 40k with a, with uh, friends and family. It was a lot of fun. Although I, I think I still prefer the indie over over Warhammer. Mm, not as much role play in the Warhammer. -y. Yeah. You probably could if you really wanted to go that way, but then the skirmishes and stuff just don't really have that same sort of feel to it that the D and D type stuff does. I don't know. Heavy role play minus robots just phasing down their enemy until everyone dies. Oh, I'm know. sure we could make pew pew noises. I mean, try us. <laughs> <laughs> Laser noises and the sounds of well, I, I would have been okay. The orcs don't really talk much, so. Die, <laughs> bag. <laughs> I mean, you would have been interesting. I mean, I wouldn't imagine the Necrons would have been speak, speaking much. One oh one one oh one. <laughs> right, is everyone back? We shall uh, return to Abrofia and uh, continue our trek along the Old Slavic Road. Uh, when we get my player map back, so I can see where you're at. <clears throat> where is my Barovian map? I'll find it, there it is. So, moving back the way you came when you originally arrived at Valaki, you head down the, the long long road muddy road again the because of the perpetual rain and mist the roads here uh just it's muddy and slippery there's potholes it, they're not well they're not well maintained uh the rain starts to fall a little heavier as you start heading towards the old mill um Emilia is going to reach into her bag and pull out that little bag that she bought yep. from the shop and in passing she's going to reach down and basically fill it with dirt and okay. then put it into her bag and it's, it's more, gonna mud, bag. more mud than dirt <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Like, yeah okay you know where I'm going. Yeah, I know where you're going um, <laughs> not a problem basically stick it in her bag so that it's facing out the um, mouth of the bag is facing outside of her um, rucksack without falling out. Okay. No problem. Uh, it's Mark sort of remarks that um, the weather is like this all the time and you get used to it. Uh, get used to being wet and cold a lot of the time. Uh, at this point, um, I need you all to make a perception roll for me, please. Fibblestead. 16. 16. Uh, Mirabel. 6. Skathus. 17. Zedriel. 17. Carlos. Big fat four. <laughs> Emilia. Can't 21. Stop drinking. <laughs> and 
add on. Ten. So we're going to use a joint roll here. So as you guys are walking, uh, and I will roll for this mark as well. Perception here. Rolls a fourteen. So as you were walking, all of you except for Carnos and Mirabel sort of notice the fog seems to be growing thicker uh, and it seems to be moving in. It seems like it's moving in. It seems a little bit more claustrophobic than normal. Um, this mark sort of notices the road, looks around and, and he doesn't seem too concerned. He doesn't say anything. But it's definitely a lot thicker at this point than it has been in your travels thus far. Is there anything guys you got guys wanting to discuss as you walk? Uh, uh, is Mark Emily, is leading the way. Emily is going to walk over to Zadriel and say, When we were outside my room, you said something about um, stopping us from getting banished? What was that about? Oh, Just it, simply asking because Emily doesn't know anything about that. Exactly. We were, um, let's see, Adopti was giving me a bell. We're sneaking around in the room, well, trying to get into the rooms, and uh, they got caught before they could get far. So we had to do damage know. control. Oh, sorry, will I be close enough to hear that? You're all in a tight enough group that you would, yeah, it's not a pri unless you guys wanting to make it a private conversation. No, just no. open the everyone, everyone can hear it. We were not trying to break into rooms, I was trying to get an autograph. I was trying to break into a room. I got no idea what she's talking about. <laughs> yeah, I was trying to break Come into the room as well. Okay. I was curious. I just oh, want to know if loudly. this guy is completely up the level because of the whole thing about the uh, circus. Wait, you tried to break into someone's room? Oh, shoot, it's Mark. Hello! I forgot. We even get to the door. Uh, <laughs> get up the stairs. What are, are you thinking? Car. You must, you must not uh, do such things. You will, you will get, uh, you get arrested. I. Oh, we were investigating. Yeah, I mean, it was sort investigating. of investigating. Yes. You said you were going to break into someone's room. Who's room oh, were you going to break uh, into? We'll I didn't hear the story right. You are investigating. Oh, that is my fault. I yeah, am... I thought you said he put his dick on the bar. Well, okay. wow. well Wait, you what? The, you put dick on bar? Uh, Erwin, no, Erwin would be much uh, 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 appalled at such things. I'm not tall enough, so it must have been kind of... <laughs> Emily is more confused than ever. Seems to be like like pulling out daggers out of sheaths and stuff. Uh, oh, Emily is right here now. You could completely ask her, Emily. When I came into your room, did I advance on you in any ill way? Whoa, what? Wait, what? Was there or was there Just not a dagger? Looking at Carlos, it's like where did that come from? This is what Adok and Mr. Stub uh, <laughs> assuming happened when everyone is away. That I advanced on Miss and Lustrous. But that is not what happened. No, those were your words that came out of your mouth. Something about unsheathing something. So Will you watch yeah. up here again. What were you this doing? is coming from the dude that tried to eat my pussy cat. Wait, what? <laughs> Amelia, please help me out here. I'm losing my mind. And Carlos pulls out his axe and just walking up by. Um, I can't remember his name. This his Mark. axe. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's Mark at this point is yeah he uh, if he had the face palm spell he would have cast it several times by now. Um, Emily is just absolutely stumped. She has no clue what's going. She just comp everything that has been said has gone over her head. Exactly, <laughs> it went all yeah. over our head too. <laughs> See what, what, uh, what went time. over your head? Exactly. Is his dagger Emily went over your head? I thought you said he would sheath. Apparently he sheathed the dagger. I thought he was on the bar. Get this, we can't leave them uh, alone uh, uh, Stop, stop, please, please. Uh, you're making my head hurt. Uh, this, can we please just carry on and uh, 
this uh, fog is getting thicker and, and I think uh, we need to uh, move a little more quickly. Oh, um... Oh, shit. I forgot to look for oil. I'll do it when we go back. <laughs> and with that, uh, it's Mark. Go ahead. It's, uh, he, he turns and... Uh, I mean, he was still walking, but he then sort of worked, walks more with a purpose, heading towards the bone grinder. What did you need oil for, Fibble? Ah, uh, they, they, I got a, a bullseye lamp, but I've got no oil to use it. No, yes. never mind. Cast <laughs> yes. grease and try burning that instead. Oh, no. I'm yeah. just going to walk. I'm just going to kind of slowly back away from Fibble's tip. <laughs> Emily is going to say, I don't know about any of what you just said. I don't know about breaking into people's rooms. I don't know about placing things onto bars. But when me and Karnoff talked, there was no interaction and he was not coming on to me. Thank you, Miss Illustrious. Finally, someone here is speaking some sense. I look I at appreciate Karnoff that. and I'm like, loser. <laughs> yes, Emilia, that wait, is too bad. I'm but wait sorry. a minute. Wait a minute. Emilia, Kana said that you were fern girling over him and he pulled a dagger out and unsheathed it and <laughs> there was just absolute garbage about something about paradigm and then goblin slaying and then resheathing daggers. Right. I, I couldn't keep track of the story. It was just all over the place. But that's why I asked you. Did he? Did, did he? Or did he not shoot Fable. a dagger? Fable, my hammer is broken. I think it's like I got a missing cog here. Is it normal? Is it normal to spark like that? Yes. Oh, maybe you should check it. <laughs> it's meant to spark. Oh, sure. Maybe you should check it. Okay. You check it. I have to talk to Adok really quick. You go check. Give him the hammer. Okay. <laughs> and I pull Adok's tiny little hand to the back. And I tell him, um, I noticed that you get a little nervous. So I got you something to maybe help you bring some comfort and you get some bravery. And I give this little teddy bear to him. And as I give it, I put my hand on his shoulder and cast heroism uh, that makes a willing creature imbued with bravery. He is immune to being frightened and he has uh, five temporary hit points. Are you willing? Say, it's a thing. Well, I want him to look at the teddy bear and think the teddy bear is bringing this feeling. Okay. So with that, is the, is the cast uh, vocal or, and somatic? It is a touch. Yes, it's vocal and somatic. So I'm going to whisper like behind him a little. So Hopefully. I would say you would have to roll. To roll sleight of hand for me. No sleight of hand with a natural one. <laughs> yeah, your your endeavor to hide the the fact that you're casting a spell wasn't very good, um, unfortunately. Um, but. Uh, uh, not for, uh, Adok, roll a in not insight. Roll a intelligence check. Okay. Wow, that's really terrible. I got a nine. A nine. You know she's trying to cast something. You're not sure what it is, but you you you, you trust her enough that you you know she's not going to try and hurt you. So it's up to you whether you are willing or not. Uh, Jadriel, can I eat this? It's not good for digestion. It's good to hold and uh, have close in case it gets a little scary. Yeah. Does it mechanize? Does it transform into a weapon? You could. Oh. Ooh. You All could. Right. I, I, are you gonna name it? I would call it Mr. I don't know. 
I would like to see like a little cyborg eye and some guns on him. That would be cool. Yeah, I, I, look, I'll, I'll think of a name, but I'll, I'll find a way about how to make this into a weapon. Because you got it for me. Well, I'm glad it's bringing you comfort already. That's good. So do you accept you know. the spell or not? Yeah, yeah. Because, okay. yeah, so far it seems like it's a weapon. Yeah. Okay, so with that, can you just explain what uh, heroism uh, does for Mr. Adolf? He is imbued with bravery, and he is immune to being frightened, and he gains hit points equal to my spellcasting ability, so you get five temporary hit points at the start of each turn. It's only a minute, so it might wear off right now. Yeah. But, but... It'll, last, it'll last for a minute, so... Yeah. Death be... <laughs> God. <laughs> but he, <laughs> Robert. Uh, with that, uh, you you carry on walking. You, our doc, you now have a little teddy bear. That uh, just make make a note of that. That uh, Zedro has gifted you, and you feel exceptionally brave right now. You don't feel frightened at all. Um, and you have five temporary hit points for the next minute. So it's not going to last uh, too long, but. Um, you do feel kind of confident, which is unusual. It's, it's a weird feeling, but it's a good feeling. At this point, with the, the bear in hand, I'm going to say, All right, everyone, I feel like it is time for me to take charge. I'm going to walk in front. I've been here before. I know what I'm doing. So I've got this. <laughs> and Adox strides to the front of the group, right up there with Ismark and Carnos, who are currently leading the group. This Mark sort of turns around and, and says, uh, well, good for you, little little one. Uh, it's good to see you so confident. Yeah, I agree. Here, hold this. And Carlos hands his axe. To me? <laughs> uh, yep. what, what size is your axe? It's is a it... two-handed battle axe. <laughs> Fibble step, roll a strength check. Uh, not Fibble. Adoc, strength check, please. Because you're definitely not proficient in battle axes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to slap him on the shoulder and like, yeah, good work, mate. What's your strength check? <laughs> yeah. Got 11. 11. Uh, it doesn't topple you over, but uh, you manage to take the weight. Um, it's heavy. Uh, you take it in two hands and, and you, you are struggling with it, but you don't drop it. Yeah, see? Right, like what I said, Carnos. Now you just, you know, get to the back because I'm gonna, I'm gonna drag this around a bit. <laughs> Carnos puts his shield on his left hand and he says, "You want this as well?" Yeah, why not? I reckon I could do it. So does Carnos hand off his shield to uh, Adok as well? Adok can carry it for sure. So uh, you now have a shield handed to you. Uh, you let one hand go off the axe, which promptly drops to the dirt, uh, stopping you in your tracks. And you take the shield. Um, I will need another strength check from you, this time at disadvantage, uh, to see if you can lift both axe and shield together. Got a 13. 13? That's not too bad. You, this, this newfound courage, I mean, it seems to have given you a boost of adrenaline as well. As you, as Carlos hands off his axe and shield to you, you stand there and you stop because it initially dropped it in one hand, it dropped to the ground a little bit. But you sort of pluck up all your strength and you manage to pick them both up. You hold the shield out in front of you, axe. Uh, which hand is your shield? Which hand is your axe in? The axe is in the left, the shield is in the right. So you left handed with the axe, shield in the right. You Bring yourself up to a, a, as high, as, like as your full height, as tall as you can possibly be, and uh, I will now make a roll because this may not even work. Yeah, you topple over with the weights of the shield and axe in your hands, and you fall face first into the mud. As he falls, Carlos just sort of grabs the shield and axe like behind him, like mimicking, bending down a bit, um, trying to help him out. <laughs> No, I've got it. Just, just go get this. I've got, I'm fine. I've got this. I've got it. Look, just stay back. I've got it. Adolf, not your size. <laughs> the shield's it's almost as tall as you are, I'd imagine. I mean, it, 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 you're not very tall. The axe is definitely taller than you. It's a, it's a two-handed battle axe, so it's it's reasonably tall. 
or long. So yeah, you you are gonna struggle. I mean, all right, I'm wiping the mud off my face. I'm gonna turn around. About, you, you know what, Carnos, you probably look like a fellow that needs the most amount of protection. So you take the shield in a battle axe because I don't even need it. I'm that good without it. Trust me. Look at me. I don't need it. And I'm you look at him, and he's covered. Much. He's covered from head to toe in mud. <laughs> And you all can right, see, all you can see is his blinking yellow eyes <laughs> behind the mud. Yeah. All right, I'll take those back. Thank you. But it did look good for about three seconds there. You had, you had this real awesome look about you. Now, you know, hey, if you could handle it without these weapons, are you better for you? Uh, and it's about you this point drugs? at Oc that the heroism wears off. <laughs> what am I doing? Why, why am I in front? Are why am I covered in... Wonderful, adult. I love it. You you know you know exactly what happened. You, <laughs> just for some reason that fear just creeps back in very quickly. Um, if anyone hasn't noticed, uh, I feel like there's you know Mirabel needs looking after uh, at, at the back because there's something that's going on. So I just I'll let you walk in front and um, I'll be right back. <laughs> With that, yeah. it's Mark mate. Let's have a little chuckle. And uh, says, uh, "Let's keep going." Yes. Yes. As um, Adok passes Emily, she's going to point her hand at him and um, cast Mold Earth and basically flick all the mud off him to <laughs> nice. the spot. Well done. <laughs> and yeah, with so that, all the mud leaves correct. your face, and the bulk of your you're only small, so we'd probably get rid of all of it. I'd imagine. It's Five foot square, yeah. so it should be pretty yeah. much all of it. Should be, should be pretty much all of it. So the the mud just leaves your body, just tight as you walk past the Amelia. Yeah. Oh, thank you. You'll never feel so clean, <laughs> Amelia. I look, I, I look cool though. Yeah, for like a split second. With or without the mud, all yellow eyes, you look cool. <laughs> Thank you. Right. I appreciate it. And with People that, my hammer. <laughs> and with that, you carry on. You start walking once again. Uh, I need you all to make another perception check for me, please. Oh my god! <laughs> oh shit! Three, <laughs> three. Oh god! There's a lot of oh gods going on in the chat, guys. Um, <laughs> with that, uh, yeah, okay, his mark wasn't much better. Uh, Mirabel. I rolled a two. Shit. <laughs> Skathis. Twelve. Zedriel. Three. Wow. <laughs> Carnos. The one. <laughs> Natural one. And, um, Emilia. Ten. Adoc. Twelve. Twelve. So, uh, the ten and ups, you now can see that this the the mist that is constantly hanging in the air and hiding the trees. You can no longer see the trees either side of the road. The mist is closing in, and it seems to be getting thicker as it's closing in. Uh, it's Mark sort of he doesn't really notice himself but he notices you guys sort of stop for a second and have a look and he turns and looks and uh says uh everyone gather gather closer together do not spread too far apart uh please uh this is not good as he says that the fog moves in closer and closer eventually engulfing all of you uh, I need to find my notes. Where are my notes? So, you realize now that the, the fog is that thick that you can no longer see each other. You can barely see your own hands in front of your face. Uh, I need everyone right now to roll an invest a quick investigation check at disadvantage. And... Uh, what you all hear is uh, is Mark will call out uh, everybody do not move can you still hear me uh yes 
Emilia is going to attempt to use shape water to move the mist away from herself. Uh, roll. If you don't need to roll for that, uh, you. It seems to move it somewhat, but doesn't. It seems to almost move immediately back. As, as you shift the amount of moisture in the air that's in front of you, it almost fills in immediately as it, as it moves. It doesn't seem to be okay. having a huge amount of effect at this point. Uh, everyone, uh, what is your investigation? Uh, Fibble step. 16. 16? Mirabelle. That wins, we get a three. Three, another natural one. Uh... Skathis. Uh, I'd have to say it was a natural one too, because I got two. Ooh, another natural one, Zadriel. Ten. Ten. Kanos. A nat one, so I get four. Three nat ones in a row. Himalaya. Ten. Ten. Adok. Nat one. Four nat ones, holy crap. <laughs> Four nat ones, so, chat. So, so with that, uh, as Ismar calls so out and uh, asks if you guys can, can hear him, uh, the only people that can hear him at this point is Emilia and Zadriel. And Pibblestip. Uh, everyone else, you do not hear Ismar call out. So uh, those that uh, did not score natural ones, uh, you... Hear Ismark remark. Uh, can can you hear me? So you have the ability to uh, respond if you wish. Emily responds. Yes, I hear you. I also hear you. Okay, okay. You stay stay where you are. I will come to you. Uh, does anybody else hear me? Yes, I hear you. Right. Uh, so he moves towards Zadriel first, who would have probably been closer to him. And in a few moments, Zadriel, you see a figure approach, and he is almost standing, has to stand right in front of you before you actually see who it is. Uh, he then grabs you by the hand and, and says, Right, uh, Ibalia, uh, uh, call out again, please. I am here. I'm here. Same thing. Uh, within a, a moment or two, he stands uh, and is practically right in front of you. Uh, he then links up with you and does the same with Fibblestep. So eventually you guys find each other in the, in the, in the mist. Uh, I need those that failed their check to uh, re-roll another investigation check if you wish to try and find your friends. Carlos is going to pull a torch from his pack, put his shield back, and light up his torch with his tinderbox. Okay, yeah. duly noted. Uh, Which is again. difficult to do because it is raining. Okay. But it does I'm, light. I'm going to uh, get everyone to do a deck save. <laughs> what, what specifically are you casting that requires everyone to make a deck save? Fairy fire. Hmm. Are you going to cast it on the area? I'm going to cast it on the area and target everybody. What's the uh, what's the size of the fairy fire area effect? Uh, within twenty, it's a twenty foot cube. Twenty foot cube. Yeah. Uh, you attempt to cast fairy fire, but nothing happens. The spell fails. I would like to cast light on my shield. Which also fails. Oh, hmm. Is the investigation check at disadvantage Still again? at disadvantage, yes. A seven. A seven. Skathis. I too got a seven. Seven for Karma. Twelve. Twelve from Skathis. Adok, another natural one. Holy crap. So, Gathis, you then hear Ismark, Zadriel, Fibble, and Emilia talking, and you manage to find and regroup with them. Uh, along the way, you uh, heading towards them, you bump into Carnos, and manage to link up with him and 
move towards the voices. Uh, so, I need... Yes. Sorry to interrupt you. Um, was that first investigation at um, disadvantage? Yes, it was. You were all both uh, investigations with disadvantage. I only rolled once. That's right. We'll, Gen we'll roll skip again. through that. Yeah, no, we'll skip through that. Sorry. Doesn't matter. All good. Just, uh, yeah, just remember, disadvantage roll twice. So, uh, you've all come together, but Adok and Mirabel are still missing. You cannot find them. Um, I need... Uh, Ismark is actually going to roll another investigation. He didn't before. He calls out again, uh, specifically to, to Mirabel and Adok. I need you guys both to make a perception check for me at disadvantage. Six. Three. You do not hear anything. You all you you're both now trapped in two, that's worse. You both are now trapped in the mist, seemingly not able to see or hear anything. Uh Adok, I need you to make a wisdom saving throw for me, please. And same with you, Mirabel. Fifteen. What was yours, Mirabel? Unmute yourself and tell me what your role was. <laughs> yeah, I just got to that. Um, uh, it's a natural one, but that makes it a four. Natural one with it. Another, natural ones, guys. Holy jeepers. This is on yeah. my normal dice. <laughs> so, Adok, um, that ever, ever present fear creeps over over you again but you manage to stave it off enough not to panic you remain still you know you i mean you have an understanding of how things kind of work here and you know that trying to run around with like a headless chicken is not going to be your friend in this particular situation so you remain where you are what are you going to try and i in my state, can I cast a minor illusion of a rock around myself? You can certainly try. Okay, and cool. the spell does not take effect. Spell oh. fails. Uh, you cast it, nothing happens. Which uh, frightens you a little as well. But you remain relatively calm and remain still. Mirabel, as you were standing wondering where your friends are you can't hear them you can't see them uh do you call out hello but while i'm thinking about this i'm gonna cast shield on myself Which if fails. i can uh, it does not uh, nothing happens unfortunately so i'm just like hello can anybody hear me anybody and i'm just gonna stand there shaking and get my cat and put him in my hand uh, your cat is no longer there And after a few moments of, do you move around or you stay where you are? Do you move? You try and... Going to stay right where I am, hoping that somebody's going to find when me. When you unmute, you are still muted for a second. So wait just for a split second before you start talking. And actually talk into your microphone because you're not still not doing it. <laughs> just, just to, to let you know. Better. No, that wasn't better. You still talk too early. There's obviously a delay somewhere in the mute, which it shouldn't be doing. So, but just, yeah, just wait a, a, a moment before you start talking. Um, so with that, um, you are looking around, you're panicked, you're worried, you can't see or hear anybody. Uh, at this moment, we'll switch back to the other group. Uh, is Mark now with the rest of you in the group? Uh, has anybody seen uh, Mirabel or the little one Adok? Did you not? Did you not find him? Uh, no. Oh, this is not good. Um, Should we all yell out loudly? We could try it. Uh, I don't think it would work, but uh, we could try it if you wish. Uh, okay. Hey, Doc. Uh, hey, Doc. Mirabel, where are you? Mirabel. Is there anyone alive out there? I point the rifle up in the air and I pull the trigger. And <laughs> it is a loud report. Uh, strength roll for me, please, as you were standing when you did it. <laughs> uh, 19. 
and you manage to stay upright. Uh, it does rock you, but uh, but it's loud. Everyone, your ears are now probably ringing with the loud report of Adox Charlotte as he fires it into the air. Uh, Mirabelle and Adok, however, you hear nothing. It is deathly silence. You no longer hear the rain. Which is another thing uh, the rest of you realize too, that you no longer hear the rain falling. You can still feel it, you just can't hear it. There is no sounds apart from the sound of the rifle that just fired. Can I cast Divine Sense to see 60 feet Fiend or Undead or Celestial anywhere? Uh, is it a spell or uh, let's see? It's my paladin. It's thing. your paladin ability, isn't it's it? action, yeah. Uh, so you focus on your deity and the abilities that has been granted to you by the divine source. And apart from Emilia, you have no indication of anything else within that area of, uh, of effect. Back to Mirabelle. As you were looking around feverishly trying to find your friends, you notice a shadowy figure. Just off the distance. At first you at first you think it's Carnos. It has a similar sort of shape as it as it slowly moves closer. But as the figure breaks through this thick fog, you notice a very tall, very well dressed, very handsome man standing before you someone you've never seen before um would you be able to see if, can, can can you see anybody else around here and who are you to answer your question no i cannot my name is strad yours that, is Mi mirabelle yes that, that's that's how did you know my name well i know everything yeah are you lost? He, I appear to have misplaced the people that I was with, but they're not very far away, I'm sure. Would you like some company, Mirabelle? I give him a look. Did, would I trust? No, I don't know. Well, can, can you see anybody else? Hmm. I cannot, unfortunately. But rest assured, ma'am, by my side, you will be safe. But I don't know you. You know my name. Strad, you must have heard of me, yes. I am the prince of these lands. Then I don't think I like you very much. Why? Because I hear that you've not done very nice things. Oh, you're, yeah. You're a bad man. Well, you see, people fear what they don't understand. Do I seem harmful to you? I'm offering you assistance. Will you not take it? Well, that's very nice of you, but... I Does that seem just... something a bad person would do? Actually, probably not. Again, allow me to introduce myself once more. My name is Stra, and I will bow and put out my hand. And I would curtsy and say, hello, my, my name's Mirabelle. Nice to meet you. And I just so look at his hand. <laughs> it's like, what, what, why did you want to shake my hand? An introduction. Ah. Uh, Okay, so I reach out to shake his hand. Yeah, forgive me, but you seem very strange. Are you, lo are you nervous? Is there anything that I can help you with? No, well, I'm not from around here, and this is all very strange, and I just can't seem to see anybody, or I've, I can't even hear my friends, and that's a little bit scary, to be honest. Mm. I understand how well I'm. I apologize for that. Again, if you would like to accompany me, I would be more than happy. I will assure you, no harm will come to you. But you just told me you don't know where they are, so how can you... help? We can walk together until we both find them. 
Two right. eyes are better than none, right? Or four, sorry. Oh, I suppose company while I'm walking wouldn't be a bad thing. Great. So shall we carry on? Come on then, let's go. So do you take his hand? No. I'm just going to walk down the road. <laughs> Tell me, what brings you here, Mirabelle? Actually, that is a very, very strange and very long story. Would you like to hear it? We were all in a bar in Faerun. Faerun? Is that where we mm-hmm. were? Right, we were all in a bar in Faerun, and then we met with this, 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 oh my god, this Carnos man who was saying he's a big adventurer, so it was like, yes, I'm going to go on adventures. And then we went to a fair, I think, and then next minute I know I'm in some strange place. This must all be a lot to take in. It's just but strange. N- <laughs> no, I, I meant more what leads you on the path of adventuring. Well... Well, my grandfather was a great wizard and adventurer, so I, you know, I'm kind of following in his footsteps. I see. I believe you have a wand, no? I do! Would you like to see it? And I pull out my <laughs> wand and look! <laughs> do you like it? Isn't it awesome? If I may, would you mind if I inspected it? And I just hold it and I'm like, nobody's ever really touched my wand course without your permission i don't want to do anything against your will you just want to have a look at it of course oh okay (laughs) ah yes interesting wood yes i think i do believe it's oak or something like that really it's from your i know I'm going to hand it back to you. Ever so, ge- ever so gently. Thank you. So tell me, what is it that you desire? Stories? Adventure? Power? Adventure? I'd like to go out and see these monsters and... You know, say I can say, go home and be able to say, look, this is my stories, I've had such an amazing time, I've killed dragons, I've met all these interesting creatures, because hardly anybody ever leaves where I come from. They just don't. And, you know, so nobody knows. I mean, already I've met this little goblin thing. He's freaking awesome. And this gnome, the only gnomes I've seen. They have hats and they've got fishing poles, but, you know, this one doesn't. So, you know, I'd like to go home and be able to say, hey, see, look, I I am also a great adventurer. And that's just all tumbled out of my mouth and I have no idea why. (laughs) You are quite amusing. Thank you for regaling your story to me, young Mirabelle. I see... Perhaps, are you looking to gain some sort of proof or revenge on someone who may have kicked out, kicked you out from your shire? I look at him and I'm like, how would you know anything about that? There are some very nasty people back at home and they're very not, not, not nice bullies, I just know. Exactly. I do tend to agree that people who treat others with disrespect should be taught a lesson, no? Yes, I do believe that as well. Um, they, they should not be allowed to keep the little person down. Exactly, Mirabelle. See, I see something in you that others fail to see. And I look for it. What do you mean? your grandfather's spirit power beyond measure not his actual spirit oh okay i was getting a bit worried there 
No. See, Mirabelle, you have power beyond measure. You do understand that, don't you? Oh, she pops out her chest. Do I really? Oh, that's so good to know. And I'm like, but where? And that is the issue. It is trapped inside of you, waiting to be released. Okay. Do you not know anything about who I am? Not got a bloody clue, to be honest, other than you're some kind of bad man from around here. Oh, see, again, with the bad talk, people will fear what they don't understand. I, Strad von Zorovich, am a powerful wizard. Oh, you're Centuries a wizard, old. too. <gasps> yeah. Awesome. How do you think I know what's going on? How do you think I know these things about you? I don't know. Magic, dear. Magic. What, so does this mean that as I get more powerful, I'll be able to know stuff about other people as well? Yes, absolutely. <gasps> that but is awesome. There's a catch. Why should there be a catch? Why does there have to be a catch? What's the catch? Because great power does not come with no consequences. See, to become something of respect and power and glory and everything that you desire, you must partake in a gift. Some may call it a curse. Others, a blessing. What kind of... But of course, you know, when you when you've got to be a bit careful with with stuff. Because you don't Absolutely. want your spells going off willy nilly at all. But what do you mean by why would that be a curse? That's just being careful, is it not? Very, very true. You raise a valid point. Mirabel I come to you offering a deal. You see, this, this mist is, or this fog, is my doing. So why have you gone and helped us lose each other? Because that's just not very nice, you know. Did you not hear my part about how people fear what they don't understand? I wanted to speak to you, alone, one-on-one. Uh -huh. on one. Okay. Mirabel, I can teach you and give you everything you want and more. What do I have to do for that? Take my hand and come with me to my castle. Leave your party behind. They lack what is necessary to give you everything you need. But who's going to look after the little people like Adok if I'm not there to stick up for him? Believe you me. I have ways of keeping them safe. And I will be able to teach you my ways of keeping them safe as well. So you'd just take me and teach me a couple of things and then you'd let me go back, yeah? Whether or not you want to leave after you take my hand is your choice, of course. Hmm. But what I offer you will be very, very hard to resist. Hmm. And I'm looking at him and I'm like... Do I believe him? Roll inside. <laughs> that was a whole 13. He seems really honest. Oops. He seems <laughs> extremely honest and extremely forthright. Hmm. So, if... Obviously, I believe him. So, okay, I'm going to say, sure, but I've got to be back with my people. And Can you tell... Can I tell them where I'm going and let all be back soon? I believe they will fail to understand. Maybe in due time, 
Of course. You will meet them again. That I'm sure of it. Okay, so I'm going to take his hand and say, so I've, I, I, I hope you've got some decent food because I'm kind of a bit hungry. Uh, Stra takes your hand and then you feel yourself being lifted up to match his height face to face. Holy shit, I'm really high off the ground. Can you put me down, please? As your, my, as your eyes meet his, however, uh, all, all thought of your friends escape leaves your mind you are now completely transfixed with his gaze a smile comes across Strahd's face just a small one he says do not fret my dear for I've got you and with that he leans you back His mouth opens to reveal two elongated fangs. His left arm reaches around your back, and as he does so, a cloak covers both you and him. And then with that, you dissipate into the mist together. Uh Uh-oh. And with that, Mirabelle and Strahd vanish. after what seems like an hour passes as you guys are talking amongst yourselves trying to figure out what's going on the mist suddenly lifts starts to dissipate and retreat back back into the forest surrounding the Slavich road as the mist retreats and we're able now to see and once again hear the rainfall you look around, no Mirabelle. But you see Adok standing just off to the road, about 15 feet from where he was standing when the mist first rolled in. Not huddling or crying, or, or he seemed, he's, he's definitely nervous, but he's just sitting there. And Adok, as this mist clears and you then see your friends, uh, the people you've been traveling with, 15, uh, 15 or so feet away from you, still on the road where you are not you i would say you probably panic a little bit but probably head straight to them and rather Hmm. hurriedly i would imagine yeah there's now back to you guys Uh, what are you doing i i'm just holding my torch out so everyone can see still uh the torch is sputtering and it's lit, but it's not really doing a whole lot. It's sputtering and spitting with the rain as it's hitting it. Uh, it didn't really provide much <laughs> of, of a illumination in, uh, in this sort of early afternoon fog. But it's still going, sort of. Don't check the tracks. <laughs> Carlos will just cap, cap the uh, torch and put what's left of it back in his bag. <laughs> no problem. That. I got a, I got a ten. <laughs> Where are you searching for traps? Where um, Mirabella was. Uh, just on the road. Yeah. Uh, you can't see anything. Uh, just it's all just muddy road. You can see what you do. Uh, if anyone wants to investigate, to look for maybe footprints, you can definitely do that. Uh, with a ten, you probably wouldn't have seen a whole lot. Hold on a second. No, nah, leave your camera on. Three. I've turned, your, turned it off on the overlay, so you're fine in Skype. Uh, oh crap, one of us is missing. Investigation rolls, please. Fibble Stib. Eighteen from Ismark. Uh, as Ismark and Fibblestub start looking around, anyone else who wishes to roll a investigation to help them in their in their search, uh, please do so. Eighteen. 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 Yeah. No problem. Twenty-two. Twenty-two. Carlos with the good old seven. Seven. Zadriel. Eight. Eight. Scathus. <laughs> Mine was ten. Ten. 
so with that uh, and we'll probably use a collective as you have you as you're all searching around looking for any sign of uh the halfling wizard that has been traveling with you you do spy a set of smallish footprints leaving the road heading into the sort of muddy surroundings of the road and then vanishing in the thick grass uh heading in the direction of castle ravenloft Crap. This mark says uh, pretty much the same thing. Uh, he turns to Carnos and, and says to you directly, uh, everyone else would hear it, but he t to you directly, he says, uh, uh, this is not good. If he has presented himself to her, I fear she may not have survived. This, uh, yeah. Do you think he could take her in that mist? I believe so. Uh, he controls uh, the weather and the mist. It is. This is his land. This is uh, his domain. Uh, Skathis, you didn't find animal tracks or something. She can get grabbed by a wolf or something, right? I check for animal tracks. Uh, again, with using a collective role, you, you, there are wolf tracks around, but they seem they don't seem like they're relatively fresh. One thing you do notice is that, that her footprints are just hers. There's no other footprints with them. It's just hers leaving the road and then vanishing into the grass. That's it. There's only one thing for this. And Carlos pulls his shield and axe off and he starts following the footprints. Uh, which you lose about 15 feet off the road and into the grass. It's just in that general direction. <laughs> okay. once, once they hit the long grass, it's just there's no way of determining which way she would have gone from there. The general, the general direction is facing the uh, the direction of the castle, though. Ah! Uh, Scaphus, uh, Adol, Fibblestab, something happened here. Her feet prints disappear them anymore. Please, I, I, I know she is your friend, but you will not find her. If he has taken her, she, she is surely already at the castle and may not be with us anymore and even if she is you are no match for him and uh, not yet you've not been here long enough and you do not know what he is capable of he is very powerful man i beg you please like, do not pursue this he sounds like an ass hat i can't wait to give my accent to him We can right. we can go back to Velaki if you wish, or we can carry on to the mill and uh, find out what is there, and maybe if we can discover what has happened, we may be able to save her in the future. But uh, I honestly doubt it. But her death will not be in vain if you will uh, help me in destroying him. We may be able to save her soul, at the very least. Emilia will appear to be quite angry and basically muttering, why her? <laughs> uh, how audible, actually, what proximity to the group is Emilia at this point? Did she, you were running well, the investigation with them, so you probably would have been an earshot? Yeah. So, I'd have been really close to them if we were all close together in the mist. Yeah, so, uh, although, everyone roll a perception check to see if you can make out what Emilia is muttering about. Uh, I dare say she's trying to mutter under her breath, but you are still in relative uh, proximity. This mark rolls a 13. Eight for Carnos. I got 12. 12, 15. 15, it's fine. 2, 15, Five. so... Zadriel, you do not. Carnos, you do not. Uh, 15 or higher, you will probably hear her mutter uh, the words, why her, several times. Uh, everyone else, you probably would not. I'm going to look over at Emily and go, 
why her what? Why did he take my friend? She says quickly off it as she's been caught off guard, sort of. Okay. So at this point, Adoc is going to tug on Sadjo and go, I, I, I don't like, I want to get off this road. I just want to get away from here. I don't like what's going on. Please. Let's get to the pound grinder. I agree. We need to keep moving. Um, we need to make a decision. Do we go back to Valaki or do we go to the windmill? And at this time, you're about about halfway. So either either decision is a feasible decision at this point. Windmill. Yeah, I agree with Mr. Stubb. Windmill is the way to go for now. If, it's, if there's nothing more we can do, the God, it's pissing me off. I agree. Uh, it is. This is. I'm angry. Uh, Another person has fallen to Strad's will, but uh, as I say, we we will fight him. We will avenge your friend. This much I am sure, but we cannot do it now. We are not strong enough. We do not have the right information. We need to find a, a lot of things. We need better weapons. We are not equipped for this. What we need is, we need a, oh, when I was in Paradigm, there was a girl called Namaris, she could cleave anything. What we need is a Namaris on our team. What is this Namaris? Uh, is, she a, uh, is she a mighty warrior? Yes, a mighty barbarian woman. She could, she could, cl she could cleave the strad. Well, unfortunately, she is not here to help us, so it is just us. So we need to make you strong. All of you need to be, we all need to be stronger. Yes? Excellent. So, uh, to the windmill, then. Agree. Stay close. Should we maybe rope our wrists together, Mr. Stibb, or something, so if this happens again... This uh, could be a good idea, but uh, not so good if we are attacked. Uh, could pose problem. Yeah. Mobility and such. But yes, stay close, it's... nonetheless. I guess it wouldn't help these shorter folk either, being tied to someone taller. I think it'd probably be better if we just stay together. If that happens again, we just don't move. Yes, it's, it's, uh, if we uh, remain close, uh, maybe, Karnos, you uh, take the lead. Uh, you are uh, you have shield and uh, yes, and good armor. And uh, maybe you, Zajrael, uh, Zajrael take uh, the rear, as you also have a shield. Uh, the lesser uh, lesser armored folk, maybe in the middle, where uh, we can then form maybe a circle if we are attacked. So, if there's another mist, Zajrael, do we pull? back and sort of use our shields like a, a defense mechanism possibly this may be work I, I don't know I do not want to uh, take control of your group if uh, this is uh, acceptable to you please uh, your input is most important uh, yeah, I guess so we it's should good, go yeah it's a good idea I mean, I understand you are probably feeling uh, not good right now, but uh, we will uh, move on, move forward. Yes, and um, the, if she is n no longer here, we will avenge her death. I am sure. She's not dead. We'll get her back. We'll carve Strad. Let's go and Carlos steps right. forward. So you will start moving as a group. Uh, as Mark moves. In behind uh, you, Carnos, uh, with you leading the way, uh, Zedriel, you fall to the back and protect the rear, and the rest of you fall in between. Uh, you spend the next probably 30, 40 minutes, hour or so, moving towards the bone grinder. Uh, you know that you relatively know, I mean, Ismark knows the road very well, he knows the twists and turns. You start heading down a, uh, a bit of a hill back towards the edge of the forest 
and then after maybe another 20 or 30 minutes or so you can now see the windmill on its little hill uh, just above the road it put the it's probably about a five minute walk from the road to the base of the hill as it sna the path snakes up towards the windmill uh, you do approach that road and what you see when you get there is uh, my maps where are my maps yeah maps of windmill this is what you see which uh, greets you at the top of the small precipice as you approach uh, the windmill is looks old uh, chat we will uh, show you as well the windmill looks old and run down it is several cracks through the masonry on uh, several at the base level through the through the top as well the windows uh, are dark there's no light coming from the interior of this uh, windmill the sails itself look like they have not seen a lot of care there, there is ripped and torn and broken it does seem to still swing and move in, in the light breeze that's blowing but not very well it's very slow but that is what you see as you approach and as Mark says uh, this place is still creepy every time I come past are you sure you want to go in is this where do you need to go you say, you say uh, the card readings yes talking yeah. to you is Adriel uh, yes, uh, it is in a will we got as, or a deed as well, so... Yeah, we own it now. Yeah. Well, this is good. Uh, so then we are not trespassing if you have deed. This is a good mm. idea. Uh, so shall we? Shall we uh, inspect a little closer? Do you all want to go? Yes, yes, let's go. Yes. That's why we came here. Skathis just moves up. Look at it. <laughs> uh, Skathis being the uh, ever-present <laughs> uh, person that's probably going to get himself killed next, um, surges forward towards the windmill. Uh, Ismark doesn't uh, uh, doesn't hesitate and follows up behind him. Um, the front door is closed. Uh, as you move sort of around, I'm assuming you're going to sort of look around the base and the outside first before just heading in. Yeah. Um, and again it seems dark you don't really hear anything from the interior you do however smell like it smells like something's cooking maybe a pastry it's a very sweet smell coming from it seems like it might be coming from the interior of the windmill and that is where we're going to end tonight's show guys as you have reached the windmill, the abandoned windmill known as the old bone grinder. Uh, chat, once again, thank all of you for hanging out with us tonight. It has been another amazing show. Strider, yes, you're a little, a little late, but welcome anyway. Twin Gats, what's up, dude? Um, good to see you guys uh, coming in. Twin Gats with the host of the raid, six players, uh, six party. Thank you very much. I say we're right at the very end, but I uh, appreciate it anyway, buddy. Um, Strider with the follow, thank you very much. We had Operative Peanuts with the follow as well. Uh, again, the earlier follows, Blowfin Around, King Frost, and LARP Dungeon Master. You guys are awesome. Hey, it's all good, man. I say the all the VODs will be available on my YouTube, so if you want to catch up with the Strad or the Homebrew story, it is all there. Um... But before we finish up, as we always do, um, we will go around our players, and um, I'm just going to turn Mirabelle's camera back on. I was like, can I come back for this? <laughs> no, you're dead. Stay dead. <laughs> I said I'm dead. Once Don't again, know. she's dead. 
You don't traitor. know. You don't traitor. know whether she's dead or not. <laughs> Doesn't matter. She's a traitor Good. no matter how. It's becoming a come back and we're gonna kill. It's, it seems to become a bit of a habit, doesn't it? Uh, traitorous, Annie traitorous Annie. Uh, so Fibblestib, uh your moment from tonight's uh, session, uh, whether it's uh, a, a yourself moment or a someone else moment. Uh, it, well, the the crap I was giving to Carnos and the fact that he was just getting flustered by it. <laughs> I enjoyed that, and also the fact that Annie's never learnt the fact you don't accept candy from strangers. <laughs> <laughs> definitely, that was uh, definitely a good moment there. Uh, we will then go to uh, Miss Annie, aka Mirabelle, the traitor. I mean, slash dead. I mean, missing person. Aka Nutty Tart. <laughs> aka Nutty Tart, who is now missing. Right. Adox snack. I'm sorry, that was funny. You do not, you do not. I did the try cake. to. I did. Um, oh, Zadriel's children. That that made me laugh. <laughs> you know, <laughs> my children. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Carnos's tirade. I'm sorry, that was fucking stand out between him and um, Fibblestub. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, lots and lots of good fun moments in the night. Uh, we will. I'll address your questions in a minute, chat. Um, we'll just get through these first, and we'll uh, just take some of those questions in the chat before, because uh, we do have some people that do have to take off. Uh, Skathis, aka Trashman, a moment from you, please. Oh, there's a few. <laughs> Rattle them off. Uh, so the, the discussion on the stairs, um, the bar discussion with Zadriel, that was interesting. <laughs> <laughs> what, the, the dick on the bar. <laughs> yeah. In general, the whole story, um, the whole <laughs> session was awesome. And now, Zadriel. Uh, I like doing. I'm still an accent. I liked when Carnos <laughs> gave Adak the axe told and and the bravery and how it wore off. I thought that was good role play. <laughs> But I'm so I was surprised. I was hoping it would last longer than a minute. I mean, if it last longer than a minute, it would have been awesome. But the fact that it was just a cool. minute, it was just it made for awesome role play. So it was it was great. Anything else? I think that's it for me. I'll save the rest for. for <laughs> no worries. Uh, we have Emilia. Okay, uh, get a couple of things. The um, whole sneaking into the inn going badly was pretty funny. <laughs> um. Carnos regaling the tales of paradigm and adult taking offense to it was pretty funny. <laughs> yes, definitely. Um, the bartender saying, don't be dick, that cracked me up. <laughs> and then just like the multitude of nat ones that we had oh, in that period. That we was had insane. so many nat ones tonight, it was crazy. Adoc. Yeah, I have to say, uh, Carnos and Fiddlestib's interaction was hilarious. Also, Carnos's interaction with Amelia was hilarious, how he's starting to get uncomfortable um, <laughs> thinking that Amelia was fawning over him. So it was interesting <laughs> to see him kind of <laughs> take a step back from that. But I also really enjoyed uh, Scathus and Zadriel's <laughs> interaction as like husband and wife trying to convince <laughs> the guard of... Um, being or the barkeep yeah we were children yeah yeah and i i do i also really do like mirabelle's use of fine familiar is this tiny tiny <laughs> childlike kitten and if you if you guys in the chat would actually see what we saw in the skype chat I, the unfortunately the image is a little small and it just won't show up well on on stream but it is literally a little tabby cat in the on the ends of the of the fingers so it's like this big it's like that tall it's tiny, tiny, tiny cat. Uh, and as always, we will finish up with uh, Carnos, aka Baz, and then I'll uh, go through and get some moments myself, and we'll answer some of the uh, questions in chat. Um, yeah, a lot of what the guys already said, but um, Zadriel just been so open at the beginning, sort of, hey, Skathis, what do you think of my god? I thought, man, that's that's heavily <laughs> asking for some trouble. Um, <laughs> And then, yeah, Adoc, okay, you know, talking about the, the eating the cat, which I was kind of expected. But then um, <laughs> also the teddy bear, can I eat this or can I mechanize it as a weapon? I thought that was awesome. Yeah, that was freaking cool. <laughs> I cannot wait to see mechanized teddy bear. 
I'm looking forward to that um, too. Mirabelle telling her story to Strad, I thought was quite amusing because she sounded like very, <laughs> not not just because she dribbled on, but because uh, the way she portrayed herself was very like Carnos, you know, wanting to be go back home and tell everyone about being a hero or not so much being a hero. She said an adventurer, but the way she was telling it was very, very similar <laughs> um, to his. And then, yeah, definitely Fibble winding Carlos up on the stairway was was awesome because I, I could, uh, playing Carlos, I wanted to act like he would act and if, I could see he would just be getting wound up by that hard out. So it was the best way to go. Um, so well played, Mr. Stubb. Yes, indeedy. So uh, awesome moments again from everybody. Uh, standout moments for me, uh, firstly, was the failure of uh, Fibble Mirabel and Adox who gained access to the upper floor and that going horribly wrong with um, Irwin, the barkeep, and then Mirabel attempting to persuade him with the whole Rictavio uh, fangirling uh, situation. Again, going horribly wrong and resulting in potential arrest from the town guard. Uh, following that, we then had uh, the... Again, the whole situation, Carnos, Emilia, that conversation, the whole conversation on the landing and on the stairwell outside of the room, just everybody pretty much dumping on Carnos uh, for a moment there. And then, yeah, Carnos then doing the whole paradigm regaling, Adok getting upset, Adok weighing in with the eating of children and all the rest of that. Uh, it was just, it was just, everything just sort of rolled on so well. Um, then obviously for me probably the the one standout moment again cameron's portrayal of strad i think that deserves a mention uh his calm persistent demeanor and uh pol ever so polite and respectful uh even though most of us any of us that know this uh, cam uh, know this campaign uh know otherwise he, he plays that uh, very gentle and very persuasive nobleman very very well uh, and that whole conversation, Mirabelle's uh, retorts as well, back and forward. Uh, I could see had Cameron uh, thinking there for a, a couple of times, just with what she'd uh, thrown back in, his, uh, which is what I wanted for that. <laughs> I was wanting so bad oh, for I that interaction to go that way. Time, I, tell you. <laughs> I wasn't sure how it was going to, honestly, was I had no wrong. idea how this interaction was going to go. I had absolutely no idea. I sort of said, okay, this is what I want. We'll, we'll have Mirabelle and Strad go at it and see what happens. And I had no idea it was going to, to work out that way with that kind of back and forth. So that was amazing to me. So uh, well done again, guys. And even Zadriel. I mean, Zadriel's and Scathis walking in to speak with Ir Irwin about the children. Just just you guys, the, the things you guys come up with in, in the spur of the moment to, to alter the story and it took you over an hour to get out of town to go towards the, the bone grinder uh, just an hour hour a bit of just almost meaningless role play when you think of it from that level but then it still it still plays a big part in the story and it, and it really opens up the characters so yes trash <laughs> what so it took us an hour so why <laughs> that's what i mean though it, it didn't matter i mean it took you that long but it's good because it opens up the characters it should get the viewers will be able to see the characters in, in different light doing stupid shit basically and just giving each other shit it, it's it's good it's it's a good story role play and i really enjoy it and i'm enjoying this campaign um on that level so uh just uh, before everyone has to sort of take off we had a, a, a question here from strider underscore light uh roast you brought back adok and uh and is it the same character or question mark so let uh cameron uh, address that one because it's directed at you uh yeah so uh, intents and purposes yes without giving away too much you'll have to watch more to find out exactly so ultimately yes it is the same adok um with a twist Uh, what else we had there? We had Blue Jay pipe up. Uh, Zadriel with the dick in the bar, or on the bar, and Adok playing Strad and taking Mirabelle, and you guys were amazing tonight. So uh, that's awesome. Thank you, Blue Jay. Oh, yes, Silverion. Mirabelle tasing Carnos was great, even though she missed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
um but yeah guys thank you so much for chat for hanging out with us again tonight uh just to let you guys know please remember you have the ability to use the channel points to give the players luck or inspiration click on the gold coin below the chat bar and you are able to use those chat points i have reduced the cost so hopefully get to more people using them but you are able to give them uh, luck which will give them a re-roll on a uh, a check or uh, ability check or save and the inspiration or the inspirations re-roll the luck is a d10 uh to be added to those so uh remember save your channel points for those uh, you can also direct the raid at the end of the show with channel points as well and you can also add an npc to the homebrew campaign with ch uh, channel points as well we've had a few added over the past few months and they have been resulted in some hilarity the latest being Carnos added to the Paradigm <laughs> campaign, which now he's regaling his uh, adventures in Paradigm on the Strad campaign. So that's where the crossovers come in there. But uh, without any further ado, I believe we should uh, pass on our uh, raid to someone. Uh, let's see who is on in the D&D world tonight. We have Loz Dog. I don't know who they are. They're playing Adventures for Armwide Season 2. We've got another Curse of Strahd running. They've been going for 26 minutes. Session 1. I think we should raid them. Tabletop Knights playing their first session of Curse of Strahd. Let's just have a quick nosy over here. Uh, Damon looks down at Ladder and uh, he goes... See, I think they might even be Australian. Hail to thee of might and valor. I, a lowly servant of Barovia, send honor they to thee. They are definitely in we the very early stages so of session one. Assistance. So we're definitely going to raid these guys. Love of my life. Irina so with that, I will just move that over there so I can do the thing and the stuff. Raid the channel. Thank you very, very much, guys, for joining us on this Curse of Strahd episode. We are going to raid these fine people here. Just stay in the chat with the raid. You don't have to do anything. We will be back on Sunday night with the Paradigm Bold campaign, the homebrew campaign. And as I said earlier, starting as of next week, I will be reintroducing the gaming streams to the channel. So if you're interested in watching some RPGs and maybe some first-person shooters, come and hang out with us. Uh, the schedule will be going up on Monday. And I'll be, we'll also go up on a Discord. And maybe Twitter. But until then, have a great evening, and we will see you next time.